previously on Dungeons and Dragons. In service of a business arrangement with recent acquaintance, the Arcanist Slosik, our protagonists struck out southward from Vost toward the ruined Bernand estate. They traveled a discreet and unmaintained mountain path to avoid the unwanted attention of the Ebon Watch, corrupt guards and enforcers of Vost and its near proximity. Uh, whose ire they had recently attracted through various equestrian hijinks and some low-key arson. Despite traveling this more covert, <laughs> despite traveling this more covert course, and under the watchful gaze of their cohort horse, uh, they were engaged by a group of these guards patrolling their remote path. Our protagonists made quick work of the Ebon Watch guards and turned their attention toward an emerging mystery. They became aware of an ephemeral flow of vital arcane power, which they followed to an arboreal gateway near the site of their combat. They found sur surrounding this strange gate the scene of some recent violence, in which lay the corpse of a druid alongside the rapidly deteriorating remains of two large fungal beings. Ciro opted to decapitate the druid for later questioning, and as they made off with this grim trophy, another of these strange fungal creatures emerged from the portal. After defeating this monstrosity, they paused to investigate the structure and opted to set a camp nearby to recover from the exertions of the day. With numerous questions in one hand and a severed human head in the other, uh, they per perused the journal of the druid and determined him to be a dedicated naturalist and a major seal enthusiast. Uh, finding these answers somewhat lacking, Gaelic performed a dark ritual, allowing them to interrogate their new friend. They were able to determine that the gateway was indeed some kind of portal to the Feywild, and that it was malfunctioning in some way, creating a kind of interplanar subduction zone from which aberrations could emerge, quote, uh, like the magma that issues from fissures in the sea floor. Uh, in the druid's words. Uh, they also learned of another powerful druid located in a vast desert to the north named Mulgren, who could perhaps provide some information or assistance in pursuing these matters. Uh, it was also confirmed that the initial owner of this animated severed head was in fact a big time fan of seals. Having successfully gathered a great deal of information Though none of it immediately actionable, uh, Gaelic unceremoniously tossed the head into the forest and <laughs> camp was set for the now late afternoon. Uh, Ciro wrestled with some moral questions about her recent use of lethal force and considered the nature of the connections between Slosik and the Arcane Academy she'd briefly been forced to attend. Uh, Gaelic searched for reference in the Druid's journal uh, to their destination uh, reference in the Druid's journal to their destination to the south, and found it described as, quote, an affront to the natural world, a scar, the will of an intellect standing athwart the natural order, a monument to the arrogance of so-called progress. Uh, Gaelic took in this ominous characterization of the estate and the possibility that its author may well have been a libertarian. Uh, the stat block for that particular type of monster is unfortunately still in development. Uh, they took to the road again by cover of night and guided Zlaw southward toward their current objective. Uh, they rejoined the main road southward without incident and pressed on into the break of a cold and misty dawn. They entered the outskirts of the village of Povlin a place once instrumental to this southern trade route, now far less populous than in its past. Uh, dilapidated and abandoned structures stand testament to more prosperous times as the surrounding forests gradually encroach and reclaim these forgotten homes. The quiet of this misty morning is disturbed only by the clanging hammer of a smith beginning their day's work as you emerge into the sleepy village center where a small handful of well-kept buildings serve the needs of the remaining populace. Here at this last outpost of civilization in this now forgotten corner of the world, 
you arrive in need of provisions and perhaps information for the road ahead. With questions in mind surrounding the dubious intentions of the arcanist and only sparse and cryptic words describing the objective at hand, we rejoin Ciro and Gaelic as they enter the village of Povlin. What do you do? Um, this, uh, what Nicholas? <laughs> like... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Hmm? We're good to go. Sorry, I was moving uh, things around. Uh, I was on me. Oh, um, so this is not a direct answer to what are we going to do, but for my note keeping, did we, did we discover the name of that druid? Um, who's uh, yeah. head? No, yeah. but you do still have the journal, and, and there's uh, yeah. every likelihood. I'll allow you like once a day to kind of. Um, this is true of any any um, documents that journal yeah. books uh, that any uh, book that we're not going to like legit read front to back. You can just uh, just open yeah, it up yeah. and see in the yeah. evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> yeah, you can take a take a crack at the book of your choice as you uh, get on with the business of your evenings. But no, you haven't discovered the name of uh, that specific druid however you did yeah. discover the name again of Mulgren who Mulgren, is yeah. uh, possibly an associate of his uh, um, so I guess... Sarah, do, you, do you think we should uh, get some supplies first or uh, before we start snooping around um, I am a little I... wary about the whole talking you know, I think we need to actually develop maybe a, a game plan for how we probe about here Agreed. because things don't seem great yeah, I agree, definitely. I think that the that um the general store could be a good place to start. I feel like uh it's possible it'd be open at this hour. I don't know if a if a tavern would be open yet or if there would be enough time people inside really um, early, right? Yeah, basically it's it's an hour where like I said, sort of as you're entering town um uh, and you, in fact, see a teeny little um, smoke plume rising from a, a chimney of one structure on your way in. Uh, you hear the clanging of a blacksmith's hammer. Um, so it's early enough that uh, business has started for probably the loudest industry in the town of Povlin, which is the work. That's of pretty one rude. Yeah. yeah, it is pretty hell? rude. But, you know, there's few enough people that maybe some kind of consensus was uh, reached at some point on, on when that gets to begin. So who can say? Um, I mean, I can, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's up to you. <laughs> um, um, I, think, I think getting our supplies, because if we, if we want to ask some questions, it'd be good to have everything we need in case that question asking goes south. Yeah. And we can find, you know, get Zlaw and, and get the hell out. Um, that would be my, my first thought. Okay, so we should, um, so we need to get, we should get like a, maybe a, a week's worth of food, perhaps? I think that's um, a good idea. And see if there's anything else um, that would be useful. I know we realize we don't have a... Um, a torch, torch. Yeah. and um, some torch. maybe some because we really don't know what we're getting into maybe some uh, do you have like climbing <clears throat> stuff or like you have a rope I think I have um, I do I have uh, some climbing material but more I only have 50 feet of rope and um, advent, some adventuring gear I hear um, that they... comes useful. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to say, and maybe it's that it's only the Dungeoneer's kit that actually comes with a torch. Um, feels like the adventuring gear fucking should, but... I uh, mean, there's a water skin and a tinderbox and string. A lot of good and... stuff in there. Yeah. Um, How do you guys pronounce pitons? Python? Piton? I've I think heard it is people... Python. I think it Piton? is Python, I... yeah. But okay, like, I've heard other, people outside pronounce of Dungeons it a and million Dragons, I've never ways. seen the word use. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. 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 Python. Um, I have those. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's but crampons, I guess we... too. I don't know exactly what those do. It's another climbing Are those the yeah. clips? They're for your yeah. shoes, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Are, hmm? oh, I don't know. They're for climbing. Maybe, maybe somehow. Not. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. 
No, I'm thinking of like um, spikes that attach to the bottom of your shoes. Those are pitons. Those, those, those are pitons. Those are pitons. So. Okay. Okay. Fucking I think the crampon no. is the thing that you you clip onto the rope. Oh no. To, no, the baton like, is the stake that you drive that in goes into, into the rock, right? Yeah, I think that might be. You know, we can get to the bottom of this uh, at some point. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that, right. I think uh, this is what we should use this session for actually yeah, well, I, I am, i'm happy gear. to explore uh the vagaries of uh climbing equipment it's definitely not my natural space the piton no. is the stake that you drive in yeah got it okay good good mm -hmm. all right yeah. the crampon yeah. is the little like shoe no that's not gonna work um oh. shoe like spikes oh, okay so i was right yeah okay good yeah. i don't know how the fuck that's in my brain um, yeah, I think we could peruse, uh, see what kind of goods they have, but definitely a week of rations each would, um, would be good. I, I can allow you guys to, um, make an insight check if you just want some, like, uh, suggestions from on high, uh, as well, mm -hmm. um, for things that might yeah. come in handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. That sounds good. I think I think shall we make our way to Dewey's general store and um and yeah, let's see, see what we open. find? For yeah. sure, for sure. Yes. Uh that that stood Not out over. to you at uh, yeah, they're closed um until <laughs> nine and it's like it's like eight fifteen, so no, I'm just kidding. what do you guys want to do? Oh man, <laughs> yeah, that got? would be amazing. <laughs> what do you do? Let's roll for initiative. <laughs> um, oh no. <laughs> we're gonna do this in six second increments, so um, no, okay, so yeah, Dewey's, you guys noticed it on your way in, is a, um, one of these more well-kept, um, buildings that is in the, sort of, you know, the downtown area of Bovlin, where there, uh, seems to be more activity-centered, uh, the interior of this larger collection of burnt-out, uh, not burnt-out, but abandoned, uh, dilapidated buildings, um. Firebombs. <laughs> has been nearly, yeah eradicated uh okay so dewey's is open um little pretty humble building uh well kept uh it appears to be a um general uh crate and barrel uh <laughs> store for uh locals there's a range of produce um there's access to some cured meats there um it also appears to cater to people that um travel through the city um, to the areas beyond that are a little more sparse, uh, less inhabited. And, um, you know, you guys see some kind of like mining equipment, um, basics of uh, boots. It's, it's a pretty big range of stuff in Dewey's. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, uh, see the, uh, shopkeep, eh, who, uh, maybe you would assume is Dewey, uh, himself is a, uh, a dwarven individual um, has a uh, kind of medium chestnut brown uh, beard in the fashion of dwarves, and um, and uh, is just looks uh, perks up immediately because you're definitely the only people in this store right now. Uh, and he just goes, "Hi well, there, how can I help you?" I think we're looking to get some rations from you, and. Um... And maybe just browse your goods uh, besides that. Uh, he goes, he goes, certainly, yeah, absolutely. You're welcome to browse the store. We, we, we definitely have these rations here. Um, they're a combination of uh, hardtack. Um, you can get them with some cured meats as well. Uh, there's sort of a mixed bag of... Uh, uh, Small packages with lots of calories, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, these, these really these, are these really raisin dense. There are an unusually large number of raisins. Not usually, but in this batch. So okay. one okay. of them has one of them has dried. Um, there's a fruit called a cranberry. And these are like crazy raisins. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying here, they're. Hmm. They're good, but there's a lot Ant of them antioxidants in here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Who knows what that word means? Not me. I don't. Me either. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> um, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay can we make an insight check to figure out if we any other like needs that we have them yeah if we look around Please. i mean should would would it be useful to also do an investigation check to see if there's anything interesting yeah. i don't know let's do all uh, the things great yeah so i would say both of you roll investigation checks uh and okay. then we will roll insight checks and uh we'll come up with a little bit of a reasonable shopping list for you. 22. Mighty 13. 22, 13. Yeah, so so go ahead and let's just get some insight checks as well. Um, okay. Couldn't hurt. 14. Okay. Nineteen. Nineteen, sure, great. Um, okay, so you guys are browsing around um, you don't get the impression that this is like a, you're not seeing any um, like spell components and stuff like that. That's, it would be cool if, if there was a bunch of like vellum stuff that's not this kind of store. This is a real roots you, down local store. Go ahead. Sierra doesn't need, you don't cast with components, do you as an arcane oh. trickster? Or do you? Oh, I guess that's true. Um, no, I think, I th I believe in our, I'm, I'm not sure if our conversation, Nicholas, was like a very researched conversa conversation, but we had said Probably not. that <laughs> I sort of have a, an amount that in the near future yes. I'll need to oh, yeah. look, seek them out, but I have, I have enough for like, you know, just for now until we oh, get okay. to like a big city or something, unless totally. I'm casting like totally. crazy, but yeah. I do think, I do think they do need I think I, spell I think components. I do. But yeah, it only but really I only have two spell out. slots though. <laughs> I don't know how yeah. fast I'd be using this. And it, yeah. it starts to stand out more with higher level spells. So I mean yeah. this is well, you have basically a cache of some things that you lifted on your way out of the Hetswick Academy that And just um, gathered in the forest and stuff okay. as much as I could. That, that are common yeah. like student components, which correspond yeah. roughly to the level of magic you're sort of capable of. So I, I mm -hmm. for the purposes of this, I think you're sort of good to go for a time with components, knowing your sort of spell right. levels you're operating at. And right. Gaelic, I've just assumed because of his travels and his nature as, yeah. you know, a You'll let us of, know when you think we've gotten yeah. Been if on we're the talking, road long enough, maybe. oh my god, Thank I forgot you. that like, clerics do have components in 5e. Yeah. Huh? Jesus Christ, yeah. they do. If but yeah, I if you get to a point where we're talking about precious gemstones and stuff, we'll we'll do a restock in town. But I, I don't think we're quite quite there yet to get nitty. Yeah, we're there still, was like one spell using... that did require like a hundred gold piece gem or something, and I that I wanted, and there was like, no, I'm not going to deal with this because I'm not going to have that for a while. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, right. Uh, in perusing around, um, you see a handful of things that um, stand out to you given your needs. Uh, you see, like, um, like a blanket that goes in between the saddle and such that maybe would, uh, you know, be a little more make the tack a little more comfortable. Complete the whole set. Um, not necessary. You can pick it up if you want. It's not expensive. You you get the impression. Okay. You see. Um, feed for uh animals uh it's really yeah. efficient i mean it's just straight grain uh that is uh you know bagged up nice uh you could get you see before you a um what amounts to like a uh two week supply um for sale there um that sort of stands out to you definitely those rations uh the aforementioned rations uh yeah. stand out to you um you definitely see uh because this place caters to a uh, minor clientele you certainly see um some efficient sized torches that um feel like uh they're well designed uh, longer burning torches you know have some serious pitch and are well constructed definitely see those as well um i I don't have anything else specific that I would give there. Um, okay. You know, uh, beyond those needs of food for your horse, food for you, uh, lighting. Are there any grappling hooks? Um, yes, because it caters to miners, and these mines are sort of um, in a state of um, 
because they're not as used uh, as they were previously, people still, I guess you wouldn't know this. Um, there are mines nearby, you surmise, by looking around at the contents of the store. And in fact, there is a section that looks like maybe a little more geared for the paranoid miner. Uh, like, like when you go to like a sports store and there's like a big machete and it's like, who <laughs> is this for in the camping gear section? It's a very specific is, person that gets that. It, because there's mining, it, are there explosives for sale? Hmm. Very good question. <laughs> I want you to roll a flat luck check to determine okay. what's up explosives wise that this shop do, would have. Do explosives exist? No. In this world? <laughs> Only a nine, unfortunately. <laughs> you see a shelf space labeled oh, no. labeled uh uh dynamite Fuck. <laughs> uh, and it is currently empty like there's like a box to hold dynamite uh and you see some like fuse kits near it um for like expanding lengthening fuses but the dynamite itself nowhere to be found unfortunately all right Let's... that was a great idea that's such a good yeah. idea i really what want to be dynamite <laughs> absolutely uh, the kobo well, I... got it all <laughs> I think um, uh, I would grab another 50 feet of rope, um, some sure. grappling hooks, some a blanket and some feed for Zlaw, five torches and a week worth of rations for myself. Mm. Um, and uh, we could pool our resources if uh, whatever, whatever sounds. Yeah. Whatever well, sounds I think better. we can, like, I... So you want another 50 just for you of the rope? Because I don't think well, I don't I have, have any. I have 50 feet of rope. So I figured if if we had 50 extra or if you don't have rope, you get 50 or, you know, like just, just to have a little bit of extra each on us. Yeah. So like I'll, I'll just get, I can get 50 mm -hmm. and then we can each attach, each attach a grappling hook to our, yeah. our rope. Yeah, totally. The feed, the, yeah, we can just, we can just split the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was um, ten days, twenty days rations. Rations. Um, that was a total of a hundred feet of rope uh, in the form of two fifty foot uh, bundles, uh, two grappling hooks. Yeah. Yes. Um, some uh, feed for the horse. Animal feed uh, for two weeks. Animal yeah. feed for two weeks. Sure, sure. A uh, little blanket to uh, assist the uh, function of the saddle. Yeah. Um, five torches. Yeah. Five torches. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you you start uh gathering these uh various implements up, setting them on the counter, and Dewey, as though he has dollar signs in his eyes, is just uh, he's like walking around and going like, well, actually, these grappling hooks are are probably the premium grappling hooks i would go with these are of, of more modern make uh we got this horse feeds excellent you know and he's just kind of doing an upsell job but you guys <laughs> came and know what you want uh yeah. and honestly there isn't that much upselling that can happen here because typically there is not uh these are the grappling hooks that aren't broken <laughs> yeah yeah and zero grabs as he's old these ones these are the ones that i go with goes to the other end of the shelf and grabs the cheapest one <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you guys start stacking things up on uh, the counter. Um, Dewey's kind of uh, going over things, doing some rough accounting. Uh, and he goes, uh, all right, all right. It seems like you guys have uh, got a big trip ahead of you. Uh, uh, which way are you headed? Well, to be honest, <clears throat> we're, we're trying to find my sister. She She ran away. We don't even know if this is the direction that she's gone, but she, we, we heard that someone matching her description left in the direction of Povlin. So we were, we were perhaps going to continue south if we can't find any word of her here. But it, can, can you tell me, 
it's this we don't know anything of this village and it seems that um there's so many abandoned buildings here can you can you give me any insight into what's what's happened he goes yeah yeah you know over over time this place is you know you could see there's a lot of abandoned buildings and you know this used to be a lot more prosperous the mines produced a great deal um of uh you know resources necessary um and get shipped up to boast and get sold up there um the, there's been a gradual um depopulation of this area maybe you know it's a combination of things economic reasons the areas to the south sort of have become a little less safe you know more rugged but um what caused the other i don't know and you know as of very recently the mining trade slowed down as well in particular so uh um, what's happened with the know, mines around here oh there's been you know we're we're sort of the point of contact between the miners goods getting over to vost and uh you know uh miners were having some incidents i guess uh some safety problems uh getting from the the mines sort of to the west and south of here back up to povlin uh you know unharassed there were some attacks uh, a couple murders if i'm being honest not to give you the impression Povlin's, um i'm afraid to say so there was a oh, loss my. of life and it's truly tragic um i'm very concerned for my sister now i i'm I think you have reason to be concerned for your sister, and I'm I'm sorry that that you're dealing with all of this. Uh, if if you, Thank you if you like, I would suggest you have a conversation with uh, Treston. Uh, he's a he's a local leader of sorts. Um, sort of runs uh, a little bit of the farming and uh, mining trade. He's a facilitator of these things, so he might he might be able to give you a little more information on all that, and maybe give him a description. Uh, of your sister, in fact, if if you want the word out, he's well, sure. I, I can certainly give a description of my sister. Um, I would be much obliged for any help um, that he could offer. Could, could you tell me wh where might we find him? Uh, he he lives um uh, two two doors down, uh, two buildings down from uh, the inn, uh, which is uh, very well labeled. It's called the Last Pilgrim. I don't know if you saw it on your way in. It's it's kind of hard to miss. It's it's uh, stands out. But uh, we completely just, missed it. Uh, oh well, it's it's you'll find it if you walk right out of this store and you turn right, you're just going to see it plain as day right in front. Oh, of Oh, thank face, you so. so much. We'd be completely lost here if it weren't for you. You know, I, it's my it's truly my pleasure to be here um, to assist. Uh, travelers in need, uh, such as yourselves, and I can see from this equipment. It's interesting that you have some spelunking equipment uh, for uh, an investi investigating the disappearance of your sister. Are you just an enthusiast of the a hobbyist uh, spelunker? Or? Well, you know, we we, we left Vost with uh, in quite a haste after I, I learned of my sister's disappearance, and. Um, we we encountered we began to encounter some rougher terrain as we made our way um, to the to the west and I we were truly unprepared for this journey so I, I thought you know we have a new horse she's not the most sure-footed um, so if we happen to find any trouble in the hills slide down a ravine and such this is really just my my thought of you know better safe than sorry and able to find their way out better like to be, be over prepared yes i was just gonna say better to be over prepared in a pinch than find yourselves lacking in a real emergency and if your horse comes tumbling down a, a great ravine and should die you have to if you need to re retrieve it you're definitely going to want that material for, for sure. He's just kind of stoked that you guys are buying so stuff. So we're going to grapple stuff. the horse he, up the mountain? <laughs> 100%. I've seen it done. Well, remember, we, we have a, to I, I we have, have to winches. I have winches on uh, and various pulleys we, we could uh, furnish you with in case of a catastrophic horse malfunction. Uh, um, I, would, I would direct you to aisle seven if that's your interest. Uh, uh, however... Uh, Is there a trade I'm, in I'm horse meter on these parts? 
there's a brisk trade in horse meat around these parts. <laughs> and when I say around these parts, I mean within these <laughs> hallowed aisles in which you stand. I'm a great lover of cured horse meat. And uh, excellent. Uh, I have to say, the the rations that are uh, in the um, dark blue has cured horse meat in there, and it's and I'm going to tell you straight up, it's the best rations we got. So I'm glad to see you have some in your in your stack there. Well, good sir. I think we will grace your halls again ere too long, perhaps on the selling side. <laughs> uh, I, so I just want to clarify: you guys are just kind of like bullshitting before making a deal about this. He is not remotely curious about what you guys are actually doing, which is why I'm not having okay. you guys roll a bunch of checks to see what he believes or doesn't believe. This man is going to say yes to anything you say. So, okay. uh, so, uh, so he starts, he's tabulating all this stuff up at, at this time. And he goes, all right, well, all told, it looks like we're talking about uh, approximately carry three... I think we're talking 11 gold for the whole stack, this whole kit and caboodle. And oh, Inter first rate. Interesting equipment. arithmetic they're using where you carried the three on. <laughs> well, it's funny because sometimes I forget. It's just a me thing. I forget threes and I don't know. You forget to carry them. I do. I forget yeah. to carry threes. I understand. Not most other numbers, though, but however, I have to have a reminder. I forget to carry my grappling hooks and rope as well. So it's a very similar problem. It's universal. I um, understand. Thero will, will hand over 11 gold from her stash. He goes, well, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. And uh, this, uh, my goods are now yours. And uh, I wish y'all safe travels. And as I said, Please feel free to uh, find and uh, talk to a uh, good friend, Treston. Um, I, I think he might have a little more information. Uh, and certainly avail yourselves of the comforts, uh, you know, humble as they may be, of this uh, this tiny village of, uh, of Povlin that y'all find yourselves in. Uh, I think you'll find that the last pilgrim has uh, surprising hospitality, given... Okay. okay given the state of things around here. So I appreciate your business very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, he accepts your money and he's like trying to like hide a little bit of a smile <laughs> as he uh, takes it because you get the impression he got a pretty good deal there. Yeah, I figured. Um, Sierra, I'm we... giving you six gold pieces. Oh, I, I, I don't mind. Uh, the That's... Um, less money than what I acquired at the event that you so wonderfully oh, wow. helped me out at. So, um, so I don't mind getting you. a little upcharged and maybe um, spending a little bit on the front end of our journey. All right. Um, all right. Shall um, we? Shall we go to the tavern and ask around about? Um, Treston, do we want? I mean, yeah. maybe. Um, let, let's do a little recon on him at the tavern first. Quick question. Well, let's, uh, let's walk out of the. Uh, yeah. Let's depart and uh, sort all of our belongings within uh, Zlaw's. Does she have saddlebags? Is that something we should have bought? <laughs> I, I will say that part of what you just uh, what you just bought, uh, buying a blanket and stuff, uh, paying a bit of an exorbitant fee, some of that, like just rounding out the horse gear set, would have included uh, those saddlebags. However, well, if Zero does indeed want a new pack, uh, that would have been a thing. Now that uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. As you walk out of Dewey's, uh, realizing we can go get a backpack if you want. As we pack, yeah. As we pack up, I think I open my backpack and and like attempt to sort of like crunch the coagulated <laughs> blood and dirt and whatnot, and like sort of shake it out, and then quickly realize that I should go back inside and <laughs> ask I'll say if he if he would throw in a backpack uh, on top of our um, our many uh, things we've purchased from him. Uh, sure. Okay. So you walk back into Dewey's and he's like, he goes, uh, I knew I'd be seeing y'all again soon. Didn't think it would be this <laughs> soon. Uh, what can I do for you? Could you maybe, uh, we're just packing away all of our belongings and I've realized that my, my pack has gotten quite, quite dirty over the last, 
the last couple days. Uh, what would you say to throwing in one of your baseline affordable packs on top of that that heap of goods we just bought from you? He goes, well, I'd say I'd say that we do have packs, very nice packs with uh, quite a lot of storage. They're very high end, uh, high utility. They're durable. They're rugged. They will go. Uh, where you wilst, uh, regardless of the weather, uh, the terrain. These are high-end backpacks, and I, I'm afraid I can't throw one in for free. However, I'm willing to part with one for a gold piece. And he points out a bag that looks nice and higher capacity than whatever you left most with, uh, with your kind of like, your like, maybe even the backpack you had uh, during your school Age. I don't know if you've gotten a new pack um, since you made that trip, um, but he does point out a indicate a very nice uh, backpack that he appears to be asking for a gold for. I'll make do with what I had. You can't blame me for trying, but I think a gold is is maybe a little steep for my for my taste after already spending eleven of them. He kind of laughs. He kind of laughs and he goes, "Well, and." I hate to say you can't fault me for trying as well. Uh, if y'all have two silver, I will uh, part with this bag. Jesus. <laughs> I flip over two silver. He catches them. Uh, he chucks you the bag. Uh, you've got a uh, very nice brand new adventurer's backpack. Uh, yeah. That will fill your needs. Uh, what do you got, Gaelic? Since we're back. Can I... <laughs> Do you have uh, like a like a staff here, like a quarter staff, walking stick type thing? Is that a is that something you sell? Uh, yeah, certainly. We have uh, various implements for the elderly, like canes, etc. We got this one cane. It's a square with a rail across the top, and it's sort of you can use it as a implement to. I don't know, say you're going to a restroom and you need to sit down and have some support as you uh, were to get onto a chamber pot. I don't know if that's uh, the tree that I'm barking up, but... Um... Oh, you mean like a full-size staff, like walking stick situation? Is that what we're talking about? I was... Something that does between, you know, let's say 1d6 and 1d8 damage, depending on how many hands you're holding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do understand the sort of uh, supplies we're talking about. That might be more... Uh, a matter for the smithy. I don't carry any uh, martial weapons or anything uh, in that space. Understood. It's it's just not the kind of goods that I sell here. However, the smithy, uh, it's made the sort of implement you're speaking of would be made of wood, and he works in metal primarily. But he also does sell a handful of weapons, so he he also resells traded weapons, and he, he might be a person I ask. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Now have a good day. Um, I think as we leave, we, you know, like make sure that each of us has rope, grappling hooks, all the things we bought, just sort of disperse them equally or as equally as we can so yeah. that like we each are carrying like half of Zla's food. And in case anything happens to either of us, we I think we can just throw Zla, Zla's supplies. food on. That's Zla's, on Zla. that's Zla's concern. That's Zla's problem. <laughs> Don't lose it. <laughs> If you lose this, you become the food. <laughs> Zla Don't be a liability. Looks at, Zla looks at you kind of seriously, but then just starts wickering and just like eyes rolling back in its head. You know, you're not sure if the message came across. Of the what is what's wickering? It. I know the like, I know the word, but like a huffing kind of weird. Okay. I, it's hard. I mean, there aren't like words for it, which is why we have wickering as a word. No, it, I wanted you to just like do it. That, that's what I, mm. I was looking for. And like <laughs> and like moving their head around. Okay. I feel like it's like yeah. the physical. It's not really my skill set. <laughs> I'll be real. That's what I was hoping for, but that's fine. Uh, sure, sure. We'll YouTube that later. Um, now, nah. uh... <laughs> don't got it. Okay. Uh, Cool. So, so you guys leave uh, Dewey's uh, shorter, a little bit of coin, but certainly richer in um, some pretty valuable supplies um, for uh, whatever may lay ahead. And richer in spirit. I think uh, you guys had a really uh, positive and sort of affirming uh, interaction with Dewey. Um, uh, 
who is absolutely counting his money right now. Uh, so you guys re-enter uh, sort of the square that is the center of uh, of town here in Poplin. Uh, what do you guys want to do next? So do you do you want to stick with um, my BS that I, I threw down in there, or should we come up with a better plan of of why who we are, why we're here? Um, when we start poking around asking questions. Well, I will say I'm I'm relieved to find um, to find proprietors of businesses more interested in getting gold from us than necessarily truthful yes. information. So I feel a little less worried about coming up with a strong story, except for maybe with Treston, because it doesn't seem as though he'd have a a reason to not be skeptical. But um, I it just goes to show that as... there's there's good people even in small towns, you know, that just care about the bottom line. <laughs> Surprisingly, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's as good good of a story as any. I think I'm. I, I will always leave it to you to do more of the talking in those situations because while I'm not terrible at it, it's definitely not my specialty. Um, reaching in the pockets of people as you as you talk to them is more my specialty. Speaking um, of which, did you have a chance to do that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. <laughs> she the blacksmith so may be stupid. harder to steal from, but, you know, we can try. Very true. Very true. Who would you um, like to be go- in relation to me? <clears throat> oh, that's a good question. You could, be uh, my, you could be my sister's friend. You could have been the last one she sure? spoke to. Sure. I was, I was going to say something about being like your niece or something, but I suppose we can't be because we're completely different races. <laughs> you know, there's, I don't know if gnomes and, uh, and half-elves really breed much of this world. Nicholas. Not as frequently as they should, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> there's still some, some real social mores. Yeah. Can I, uh, can I point shame. out that there should be, and I, I know this is like probably a discussed thing in D&D yeah. world, but there really should be half elf, half gnome, half elf, half Goliath. You yeah. know, like it just feels like oh, there's yeah. a lot of wasted ground yeah. on that. And and that there are only half elf. As I mean, is is it, search, don't do search, it at all. Uh, like, don't do it at all or do it with everybody. Right? Yeah. I mean, search the custom races on fucking D&D Beyond and you will not be I disappointed mean, if you... Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. true. That is yeah. true. Yeah, why? Why? Uh, yeah, that I even wonder if people have plumbed the depths of D and D. Like it, it's nearly impossible to even find anything in custom races there because there's like twenty to forty entries for each like hybrid, each possible like hybrid. So you have to go through all of them and oh, see like shit. who even bothered fi- like filling out like the like <laughs> flavor text and stuff. Yeah, sure. like right, right. That's amazing. Well, then we yeah. stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel it like just, it, it's just being I think Wizards of the Coast stuff. needs to do that. That's yeah, all like, I'm saying. It does, like, there is less legitimacy to it, and, like, it creates an inherent bias by only having, like, a half-elf thing. I yep. agree. Yeah, for I sure. Agree. For sure. Um, it's your world, buddy, so you tell us <laughs> what kind of interbreed well, is happening. There, there are half-elves who are half-gnome, or half-gnomes who are mm-hmm. half-elf. I don't care how you like to separate that. And honestly they're probably not that interested in talking about those details. So that's, that's my world, all right? All I'll right, get it out of all them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, yes, you'll, I think, you'll be I think my sister's you, friend. Yeah, I can be your sister's friend who, who, saw, who informed you that she went missing, and I know very little, and I'm very <laughs> shy. You're not a good and... friend. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one she's got. <laughs> I'm the only one she's got. She's a real asshole. No, I'm yeah. uh, she's not a good friend either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we could even, if, if things were going well speaking with anybody, I think we could even sort of maybe hushedly say that there was, that she had some interest in the estate. I don't know if we, it, mm. I would say only if that was, mm. if the conversation was going exceedingly well and yes. that we, uh, we maybe were trying to follow where th- we shot. We thought she might go. She had fallen um, in with a disreputable man, and there were whispers yes. of them going to the Bernanda estate. I think um, mm-hmm. we don't know what this is. Even we're here to find answers, but we're against yes. whatever is there. Certainly, exactly, exactly. Nor should anyone go there. But she no. did. So where is if it? We like have it. to. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, shall we? Check, uh, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, start so warming those dice up. A, um, I literally am going to choose. Shall we find you a staff? <laughs> um, so, no, it's not. I mean, we can go. Is there anything that you need at the blacksmith? Um, he's been just uh, banging a lot. So, you know, I, I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> we know he's open. Um, and uh, I guess that's another avenue of information. Um, I, I think, Nicholas, you said that they were a black blacksmith and or farrier. So we could bring Zlaw and have them like, just look yeah. her over yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. and yeah, see yeah. if her shoes look look good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Nice That's totally shiny. sensible. Yeah, you can you can um you could uh definitely go over to the Smithy and uh you know you just recognize the sounds that you would associate with, you know, some kind of forging of uh metal and given the rural nature of this place, there's a very good chance they uh are sort of a catch all for that type of work. Um so that's a sensible um hypothesis. Does does Law have horseshoes on? Yeah, so Zla yeah. is shoed, and and in fact, they're they're pretty fresh okay, shoes, good. from what you can tell. You guys aren't experts on the maintenance of these; they're dirty because this horse has been walking. Uh, and uh, but but they look like pretty um, recently shoed. And you actually roll an insight check, actually, if you will. Uh, Both of us, or just one of us? Yeah, but, uh, both of you just roll an insight check. Sixteen. Uh, 18. Yeah, you guys... On that. (laughs) Just considering... (laughs) You guys just kind of take a beat to consider as law the needs of their shoes. You kind of pick up on that the the shoes are... seem pretty new-ish. And that the law seems like a sort of a young... But, like, um... Probably this year, a like sellable full on adult horse, and have a pretty clear sense that this horse was like intended to be sold because of the fresh shoes. Oh. Probably during the Mercantile Festival, probably within days of when you guys absconded with uh, with Slaw. So, really got a good uh, high end uh, high end horse uh, before any of the merchants in Boast could. I told that asshole at the gate that I was going south to find the best horses. <laughs> and he was like, no. Yeah. You did. And we did. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we're so sure. So sure. Do you guys, uh, you want to head to the smithy first, the inn first? Uh, I think we might as well go to the smithy first yeah. since it's still morning. And sure. maybe save the tavern for hopefully uh, more people there. Sure. And, and I'll say you guys um, futzed around in town. Um, you know, you guys have burned about an hour uh, at this point. Sun's up a little bit higher. There's a little more, you see more activity. There's people kind of walking around. It's not like it was as you entered. I'm um, ready for a drink pretty soon. But uh, yeah, let's yeah. go to the West. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> uh, first. Try to be like um, my... slightly more respectable, you know. Just mm-hmm. I realize, I, I mean, there, there's probably not a whole ton of situations where I need a melee weapon, but right now all I have is a, a crossbow. Um, yes. And so yep. I thought that this, um, I have a, sh- in combat I have a shield, but I thought I could potentially we- just wield the, the quarterstaff one-handed if there's any reason that I ever uh, wanted to use a melee weapon. But a quarterstaff also seems like it could be potentially practical uh, jamming a door open or poking something or so that, that's what was my main thought of uh well i have a stuff. crowbar also it's just so. it's just good as a priestly <laughs> disguise i feel you just have uh absolutely you know um certainly yeah you guys head to the uh smithy with staves and shoes in mind um you you enter the um the space he's sort of operating out of which is um has it has a roof like other buildings in town? It's a little more open air because of the great heat that uh, tends to accumulate in spaces like this. Uh, you see, indeed, a forge that's been uh, stoked and lit up earlier this morning, and you see a uh, thickly bearded young man uh, in a filthy blacksmith's apron, uh, who's like just smudged with you know like soot and. Uh, He's uh, he's stood there, uh, kind of 
finishing, uh, doing some finishing work on uh, horseshoes, which he's throwing kind of into a um, large uh, stack, a collection that he's kind of uh, getting going. Um, and he uh, he doesn't really super notice right away uh, until you guys get a little closer. And he, he, you know, out of the corner of his eye, catches you there and, and looks up at you. And he's like, hey, can I help you? Me? Hey, I was, do we, do we decide that we didn't actually need horseshoes, though, because they're like brand new? Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the conversation was maybe having someone give his law a look in mm. general, just to give a report on health. Uh, or the general status of Zlaw, yeah, including, yeah, yeah. including shoes. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, good sir. Um, we came with a couple uh, needs in, in mind, and uh, we had the impression that you were both a blacksmith and potentially a furrier as well. He he nods and he says, yeah, that's right. I, I, I attend the needs of, uh, you know, horses in terms of horseshoes. And yeah, I, I uh, do some smithing work as well. Uh, uh, please let me know what what your uh, what your was of interest to you. Well, so we've recently become the owners of a horse that we absolutely own, and um, we were hoping that you could perhaps give her a look over and and perhaps tell us about uh, just her general state, and uh, you know if we if there's anything we potentially might need to do for her health and and wellness. Um, and as a side note, I also was interested in perhaps some kind of a, a fighting staff, if, if that is something that you uh, might be a purveyor of. I understand it's not, you know, made of iron, but um, nonetheless, we were pointed that you might he, have one. He, he raises his eyebrows and starts nodding. He's like, yeah, we can talk about that. I, uh, I have recently had uh, uh, done a little trade where in which I received uh, a, a simple, a simple, uh, staff uh bigger than a walking stick though i think uh of some general use to people that might be inclined to use it as a weapon for sure um but he goes as for this uh this mare this beautiful horse you brought in uh yeah i'm i'm happy to take a look uh uh and then you see he switches gears uh and and uh grabs Takes a second to like get some trust with Law, sort of just outside his shop, you know, hand on the nose. This guy obviously has. Actually, you know what? Hang on. I'm gonna run to the bathroom while you guys, while he looks over his law. I'll be right back. He he rolls a 19 for his animal handling check, a uh, natural 19, right. and just this guy clearly has a way uh, with horses, uh, which is good. Uh, if you're a farrier, I mean, you would one would hope uh, immediately develops a rapport with the law and uh, is able to, you know, do an examination of the shoes, um, kind of just like make some assessments of like horses are horses are like uh, funny because it's like just it's like an animal, but it's also an animal that's used for like really functional stuff, like either used for speed of transit or used for like hauling heavy things so there's like all these mechanical components of horses that people who are trained uh tend to key into and he starts kind of like grabbing uh and feeling along like tendons in the legs and hindquarters and uh, along the back of his law and just kind of doing what looks like a field veterinary inspection of his law um no funny business and, <laughs> <laughs> he he's like uh, all right. yeah <laughs> he, he goes on with his inspection um let's see what what he gets uh he's like you know this is a uh this is a young horse it seems pretty healthy and uh you know these shoes look Pretty good. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to be in need for um, for some time. Um, I don't know. I, I uh, there's nothing jumping out at me that says that you couldn't rely on this animal in the near future. He well, says, thank you very much, sir. That's a very unself-serving answer, and I appreciate your candor. 
he 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 rolled a natural three on his like investigation <laughs> check of the horse. So I, I just think for him as a profit motivated guy, I was like, no, he just doesn't like make himself money with his <laughs> insights or answers. So that's how I made that make sense to me. But no. um, anyway, that just give you a peek behind the screen. Mm. But um, Thero comes back from behind the side of a building, like pulling her pants back up. <laughs> she just off the squad. <laughs> Black Anyways, what, how, not... how's Law doing? My colleague needed a breath of fresh air from all the, the fumes <laughs> in here. He nods. You didn't pee on your building, to be sure. <laughs> He's like, oh, and why? Sh- and why would she? No. Um. Never. The uh, the uh, checkup for your information, basically, uh, Zla seems good. Uh, no, no needs horse wise that that this uh, this person would. Uh, have any uh need to Perfect. bring up uh are you and, are uh, you able to determine if she has a soul or not i've been getting goes, some soulless vibes he goes you know you ask a question that has kept me up at night a great <laughs> deal which is not specifically of your horse but of horses what what makes something truly alive? And then he just kind of like stares off into space a little bit and just does like a law is just standing there like. Absolutely They're making a similar still. facial expression actually, <laughs> and and inhabiting a similar stillness in that, <laughs> in that repose. To be sure, to be sure. Um, well, I, again, yeah. Thank you for for your candor and. Um... He says, I, you, mentioned, happy to, you mentioned a um, staff. I did mention a staff, and you mentioned a staff, and I'd like to have that staff that you mentioned. He, 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 um, he goes, uh, yes, surely, surely. Uh, he walks over to um, kind of around a corner, um, and he kind of like takes a, uh, like a um, protective fabric that's sort of draped across some things that he's kind of like um, staked up into the wooden wall this uh, structure he's operating out of you see a handful of different kinds of uh, blades of of varying makes and he points to some you know well made but not like you know extravagant um, uh, blades sabers stuff like that Uh, and it's just like these this uh, you know I I got done forging this just uh, you know not two weeks ago and uh, you know, I was hoping to get a to get these on a cart up to Vost, but uh, you know, with the roads uh, as as risky as they are to travel, I, I wasn't able to get these in for the Mercantile Festival. Which means that if you are interested in, you know, some some of my blades, I, I could certainly get you them for a steal. What uh, do you, do you have any slender blades, the rapierish quality? <laughs> Um, he, he indicates toward a blade, uh, that is, um, uh, yeah, it's sort of a more, uh, pointed, uh, thinner, um, a finer make than some of his more basic swords. And he goes, um, yeah, daggers, rapiers, I, I, I have, uh, I've spent some time uh, working on these, and uh, I think you'll find the quality to be uh, peerless. I'm going to make a uh, an investigation check if you'd be so kind. Investigation. Yeah. As you look at the blade and sort of like line up what your eyes tell you and what he tells you. Four. Can I? You've... Can I? Like, but not say anything. Can I? Like, look at it sure. while he's definitely. <laughs> Uh, twenty-three. <laughs> Gaelic <laughs> looks at what is maybe he imagines to be one of the most well-balanced rapiers <laughs> that he's ever considered, uh, and he just—it's like a movie begins in Gaelic's mind of him just aboard, uh, swinging uh, across the deck of a pirate <laughs> ship, and just like on God, and just like nailing a fucking like. Uh, some kind of sea monster who's boarded the ship and he's kind of 
having that just, experience. I'm just doing the Star Wars kid like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ciro looks at the blade and uh, and considers his description as it being of peerless craft and goes like, yeah, yeah, that, I have definitely seen the peer of this blade and this is like a... He reaches <laughs> at her side and feel, and looks at her own, like, cheap you know, rapier because she has one as well. <laughs> Just... Ciro with a 23 fully recognizes that this is a capable instrument of violence and nothing more. Uh, and certainly <laughs> yes. has seen better. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Well, it seems it seems like a good blade. Uh, he goes. He goes. And that the staff that you mentioned here. Let me. Uh, Let's forget about the staff. <laughs> I I appreciate a good episode. It worked on me. I want. I'd like to take <laughs> this rapier. Uh, he goes. Well, I'm happy to sell it to you. I'm glad to uh, be able to sell anything, uh, given, you know, what's been a sort of bad turn for me. And honestly, the virus. You know, <laughs> the Omega virus, to reference a board game from the 90s. Uh, he goes, uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to move this blade. Uh, and I could, uh, it could be yours for uh, five gold. Not a problem. Sure. He he hands you over uh, this uh, rapier of of questionable quality, and you can add your was inventory. It, was it like just a regular rapier though? Was it like a? Sh- this is a flat out normal rapier. I think, <laughs> I think it's Zero the- like tugs on on uh, on Gaelic like uh, cloak and sort of makes like a visual like like get the price down after her experience with the backpack and how willing uh, Dewey was to lower that price sort of gives a couple little hand motions like get no, it lower, already get it the game away, <laughs> <laughs> and then she looks over at, at, uh, at the smithy hoping he didn't notice uh, well uh He's kind of like looks over you and he's like, gives you just like a little <laughs> discouraging face and hand, but you know. Zero just goes. <laughs> five gold, I mean, this is a beautiful rapier, but five gold does seem to be a bit over market price from my experience. Is there any wiggle room in that? He goes, he goes, make a persuasion check for me, actually. As I quickly realize that we're going to have to, like, actually haggle with Nicholas. <laughs> 16. He goes, he, he kind of, you know, looks down and he's like, you know, five gold is the... Five gold is what I want my weapons to get for me, you know, when they can make it to Vost and, you know, be in such the, you know, the flurry of trade that happens this time of year. And it's it's truly a shame that I, I can't be a part of all that and, and make the money I expected for this year. And, you know, the, the money helps me a great deal, but. But no, I, I I can part with this for a. We can we can talk. Uh, I I could certainly do three gold, for the blade. You have a deal, sir. If I weren't here under such dire circumstances that I had no control over and are so sad because of my sister and I don't want to get into it, I would gladly pay, <laughs> um, <laughs> so much more money. But you know we're just skint, and. Uh, <laughs> Just want to be prepared, because we heard that there's been some murders <laughs> around these parts. Um, He's like and that scares me. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm I'm sorry to hear about your sister. Uh, make a deception check for me. He's he's a little more curious of a person, I think, than Dewey. Uh, My pleasure. But... Uh, what, uh, plus eight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
12. He's kind of like, um, what, what you're saying is true about everything else and that the weapon, you know, for defensive means and knowing that there's been murders, like he's, he's just like on the level with all of that. Something doesn't like a hundred percent, uh, in his face. Like you, you kind of feel like it doesn't smell right to him, but, uh, but it's nothing that that matters to the that is germane to this interaction. So, well, we're in a horse shop, so nothing smells all great to me. <laughs> Here's your uh, money. Sir. He he hand out stretched. Um, takes your money. Um, uh, collects it and uh, and uh, says, "Well, I thank you for your business, and and you know, it's people like you passing through, uh, willing to spend on on." high quality local goods that keeps places like this uh, alive. So I certainly appreciate it. It takes a village. Uh, shall we head to the inn? Yeah, let's head to the tavern and, and, uh, and get ourselves some uh, breakfast of champions. Look for yes. our, uh, our local leader. See if we can ask some more questions. Fingers but be crossed. Ready There's a mimosa breakfast as well. Huh? Oh yeah. yes, yeah. Save uh, our ration. Yeah. A sensible, a sensible approach. Uh, I think, uh, I think it is here that maybe we can take our first break as you sure. guys exit the blacksmith's shop. Yeah. Uh, enter this sort of town square in Poblin and make your way toward the inn. I think we'll uh, we'll take a quick pause, uh, 10, 15 minutes, uh, and uh, be right back. So uh, you exit the uh, smithy, uh, uh, reasonable quality rapier in hand, uh, and you uh, uh, enter into the... Uh, you know, the little sort of town square uh, here in the center of Povlin. Uh, and indeed, it's very easy to spot uh, the last pilgrim. It, it's The signage is uh, uh, abundantly clear. And uh, it's one of the, again, just scant handful of businesses uh, or buildings that appear to have any kind of signs of life uh, and are not left to uh, neglect. Um, so what do you guys do? Shall we head to the tavern and get a drink and maybe uh, discuss sort of what we'd want to ask uh, this uh, Treston uh, fellow when, when and if we can find him? I just want on my sister. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's do that and, uh, you know, chat up. The, so you're uh, like kind of <laughs> <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, yeah, well, maybe we can chat up the bar person to uh mm -hmm. see if they have any because I, I feel like there's still uh none of the people selling us stuff have been terribly forthcoming about it i feel like there's maybe more of a story on besides like an economic downturn on on this depopulation here um and i'm assuming yeah. that there's something to do with bernanda state so um yes I mean, we can definitely ask yeah danger uh, on the road Tr tristan was it uh, uh tra Treston. Tre Treston. Treston. What is Sorry. it? Treston with an E. T R E S T O N. I will adjust yeah. my notes. <clears throat> um, we can definitely ask Treston, although he's sure to have uh, an agenda as well that is possibly to downplay um, any murdering that's happening Rest. to the south. So, yeah, mm -hmm. let's head to the head of the inn. Get a drink. Uh. Surely, uh, you guys uh, head into the last pilgrim, which probably of all of the structures uh, that that seem to still be inhabited, uh, from what you can tell, is is certainly uh, among the most inviting. Um, it is, um, you know, not by any means a uh, fancy or a. Um, you don't get the impression this place is for the wealthy. But it is clearly very well cared for uh, from the exterior. And as you enter the space, uh, you know, that, that impression's maintained. Clearly a, a lot of uh, energy and uh, 
kind of uh, heart has gone into uh, making sure this place remains a uh, a uh, warm and inviting uh, climb for uh, you know uh, various travelers or um, you know locals uh, in between uh, their their work and their trade, uh, presumably with uh, the city of Boast. And um, as you enter, uh, you see this kind of uh, shorter, um, very likely uh, human, um, kind of uh, early middle-aged woman. Uh, uh, and uh, she looks up, kind of has like a um, stocky uh, build and kind of a reddish uh, complexion. Um, and... Of <laughs> perhaps perhaps <laughs> and uh she she looks up and it's like uh she's like oh welcome uh it's a pleasure to see some friendly faces are you uh traveling through here to uh uh get some of my world famous uh uh breakfast and or other accommodations I would love to say that we were, but sadly, I fear that my sister might be murdered. So we need a drink and maybe a little food. Her, yeah. her face, her face droops momentarily at just like the intensity of that interaction. Go ahead, and, uh, just just for uh, make a, a de deception check for because <laughs> why not? Oh my god, um, <clears throat> eleven. I, I, I rolled a four on my last one and a three on this fucking deception check. I'm eating shit on deception. Thankfully, there's a plus eight. Uh, wow. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a pleasure to me knowing how juice that stat is for you. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can um, I can, walk it can back. I can I like uh, sort of like I don't know make some kind of check by way of like really like. Uh, you know, like holding at his hand and like patting him on the, cause I can only reach to like your lower back. Like, you know, maybe like mm -hmm. persuasion that I am really invested in this sad Stressed. reality. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I will allow I'm you using either... guidance to bump that to a 12, dude. <laughs> cool, right okay, on, big, wait. big up on that. Uh, I will, I will allow um, the uh, zero uh, as uh, playing the role of sort of an aggrieved, um, Actually, I guess the way this could work. Ciro, make a deception check for okay. me that if you pass, I will allow Gaelic to get advantage on oh, perfect. Okay. that deception roll. That is a dirty no. 20. Dirty Ooh. 20? Yeah, 100%. Dirty 20. Yeah, Gaelic, Gaelic, please roll that, that last um, uh, deception check Watch with this advantage. this be like a nat one. <laughs> I'll let you apply that plus one guidance roll that you've already rolled to whatever you roll for this, uh, because that dice is already. Oh, wait, I get to roll again. Yeah. So you I, get to roll passed, with yeah. advantage your deception check, but we're Sorry, still going to use your plus that. one dice there. Yeah. No! Oh no! I shouldn't have said okay. that. I was like, "Watch well, this be a nat one." Well, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, well, because it's just taking the role and making it okay. have been it's with advantage because it all happens in real time. Okay. Still the twelve, yeah, with that plus one guidance. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you see um, this uh, this um, person behind the bar. Her uh, sort of facial expression, like kind of droops a little bit in concern um, when you say something as dire as what you say um, and kind of perks up uh, in response to uh, Ciro adding that we're going to need a drink uh, post haste but uh, you don't really like get an impression that this landed in like a, you got them on your side um, kind of way and uh, I'm, I'm the... sorry I'm, pro I'm probably overreacting my <laughs> We're chasing after my sister, and and we think she's gone through here. And the only thing we've heard since we got into town is that there's people who have been attacked south of here, and there's there's been a couple murders apparently. My God, um, we're very I, very concerned. We just don't know what to do, and we're trying to to see if anyone has seen her. 
We need to find out where to go next. She she, she responds. Um, that there, that's that's correct. There 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 have been some murders around here, mostly of um, miners. Um, but but yeah, it's it, this is a dangerous area, and I, I'm I'm sorry to hear about your recent hardship. What if you tell me what the young woman looks like? I, I could certainly let you know if I've I've seen her. Her name is is Imelin. Um She has medium brown hair. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, sometimes she ties it. Sometimes it's it's like a light pink. Um, I'm not. I haven't seen her in in months. Uh, I don't know. This is this is her good friend uh, who was the last person that she spoke to. Um, and she she's I love her so much. Um, she's you know f- five foot six and um, very friendly kindest person you've ever met but you've never met her she's so my, my my sweetest friend uh yes she has she has brown hair and and uh would have been dressed in a cloak and some some basic uh clothing and um we haven't seen her in in weeks now and we're we're beside ourselves he took up with a man of of ill repute uh, i'll say no more on his account um and he had some some scheme in mind. It's something to do with the the Bernan estate. Is is all we know about this. We think they headed this way. We that's all we know of of their plans, such as they were. And we're just trying to see if anyone has seen them or knows what the devil they might have been doing going to the Bernan estate. I think um... as as he finishes that. I'll, I'll like sort of make eye contact with her and, and like point to the like casks behind her and just make like a two, two drinks sort of, goes, uh, you know, to like, like grease her wheels a little bit. <laughs> she's like, you know, she's like just kind of reacting to that. And, and um, she, she kind of catches your gesture towards the end of that. And it's like, Oh, and as she's turning around and, and um, filling a couple um uh, cups uh, from a uh, cask behind her. You you hear her, she's just like, "Oh, you poor dears! I'm so sorry. This sounds this sounds truly um, devastating." And, and actually, can you just make a um, make up not a deception check because I I think the that's sort of been decided, but if you want to make a persuasion check just to kind of like see what the um, overall kind of impression she gets of you is. Um, okay. 24. <laughs> okay. Back on yeah. Business. So with a 24, um, she's, she's talking like she's invested in, the um, story you're telling, but certainly disposition-wise, have not rubbed her the wrong way uh, in this interaction. Um, and you don't really have a read whether she believes or disbelieves um, the story as written. But she's like, "Oh, you poor dears! I'm so sorry to hear about all of these hardships." And, and it is, you know, it's it's a dangerous place um, down here in the south. And and I. I I worry for for your sister and for your friend and and um, uh, her name uh, Imowen and with a uh, sort of brown cropped hair with a little a bit of pink maybe I think you said um, sometimes yeah, sometimes yeah. sometimes depends yeah. um uh, no I I don't I I have not seen um I don't think I've seen Imowen or her her this Lothario you've brought up, but, um, I, I, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I hope to at least be a, a safe haven for you travelers on, on the road, this, this dangerous road, as you point out. And, uh, you know, you're welcome to enjoy my hospitality as long as you need. And I'm happy to have you. And as she's kind of saying that she's like laying out on the bar, uh, a couple drinks and, and, uh, just because gesturally so far as like the language, uh, yeah. she's like, 
at, at zero where she's like gesturing for like, like it's three because she doesn't want to interrupt talking <laughs> to mm-hmm. say it's three silver for the two drinks. Cool. Um, I I think is- we'll also need uh, a meal if you if you provide that at this hour. Um, as eggs we, Benedict we- were my sister's favorite. If that's something that you know <laughs> you <laughs> don't offer, she. Um, she, what do they have here? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, she goes, she goes, uh, she goes, if you'd been here yesterday, dearie, we had eggs Benedict as the daily special, but today all we have is a New York steak skillet with bell peppers and hash browns served with uh, a side of bacon or sausage. And I'm so sorry you weren't here yesterday. We were doing Eggs Benedict, and it, was, it goes off well every week. And it's, it's one of the few comforts we can provide to these hardworking, this hardworking community and the travelers that should pass through it. But uh, I, can I interest you in one of my New York steak breakfast skillets? My God, Sarah, this sounds a little bit heavy, but if, if you're interested... <laughs> Is there, is there a, like wipes a like oh no ex Benedict here away <laughs> and, and says yes please uh, hash browns extra crispy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you you both recognize that New York uh, is a not two words but a compound word spelled differently <laughs> than New yeah. York uh, and is a uh, a, a new small <laughs> a new yeah. yes like yes, like and- the spring. <laughs> Not another city uh, named Newark, uh, <laughs> but uh, to the north, fame, fame for its ranching. Um, Thero but, is, uh, is quietly praying that it is horse meat. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so, uh, so it Newark like strips steak. Uh, so you guys are in for breakfast. She goes, oh, certainly, dearie. We'll get those going right away. And uh, she rushes off and starts preparing these um, breakfast uh, skillets or uh, informing the kitchen to get this going. Um, seems pretty friendly. Um, and uh, and uh, you guys are um, sat. At, uh, are you guys sat at the bar? Or do you guys want to grab a table in this sort of humble establishment? I think um... we... I wanted to ask her like another couple questions, but I think we should get a table so back. we can talk amongst ourselves uh, more privately. Yes, I agree. I think we wait for her to bring food back, and then and then um, maybe maybe we um, we should inquire further about the mining. It seems like yeah. um, the violence and and troubles maybe all kind of pivot around that that point. Um, and then maybe, yeah, I think maybe planning. maybe you should ask her because I think. You came across a little more sincere than I did. <laughs> I'll, okay, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I, I'm due to fail, but I'll do my best. I'll follow up real quickly if anything happens. <laughs> um, she she uh, rushes back to the kitchen. You guys um, grab your drinks, uh, approach a uh, table. It's a, it's a humble establishment, but it's actually of some size. Um probably a greater size than it needs to be given the amount of people you sort of see milling about. Um, you don't get the impression that uh, this place gets packed very often, but it's here and, and obviously it once did. Um, so uh, it's, it's very clean though um, and uh, inviting and uh, you sit down at uh, a little table. Uh, the woman you just talked to um, kind of uh, peeks back in after a second and goes, uh, Oh, by the way, my name is Bayetly. You can call me Bay if you like. A lot of people do. Um, and, uh, you know. What, what was uh, your full name, sir? Uh, Bayetly. It's B E A T L E Y. And she said, some people call me Bay. Um, and uh, she goes, um, we're, I'm getting all that started, and, uh, and uh, we'll be right back out with that for you. And uh, she's off for a minute. Uh, you guys are sat at the table um, of the establishment. Uh, is there anything you guys want to do kind of while you're waiting for breakfast or just kind of post it up, thinking your thoughts? We kind of, if we look around the tavern, is anything, is there anything like unusual being in this location that we wouldn't expect to see like in Vost or you know, where 
were either of us originally from. Is there anything weird about like the situation here for a tavern? And is there anyone else in here too? Cool. <clears throat> you don't need a perception check for the question, is anyone else in here? Which you know <laughs> you guys are in here alone at the moment, uh, in this pretty good sized room. Uh, her breakfast, uh, whatever quality it may be, hasn't uh, attracted anybody this morning yet. Um, but it's sort of early, so who knows if it gets more of a brunch rush. I don't know. Um, uh, Gaelic, uh, you were asking if there's anything weird in this room that you wouldn't expect um, or that piques your interest. Um, just uh, do, do a... a perception check for me to uh, see if anything kind of stands out uh, to you. Um, there, are all, there are various things hanging on the walls, animal heads, a bunch of stuff. 17. Yeah, okay, for sure. Uh, with the 17, um, you see on the wall uh, a big, um, very um, ornately illustrated map of this lower peninsula that sort of ex extends from Vost um, down to the end of the uh, peninsula. And it's, it's much more um, well-defined and, 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 and um, to your eyes, it's like, there's so many more names of places on it um, than you would expect. And uh, that, that, um, quick look at it you also have the impression that this is a map probably of some vintage that's been up there for a very long time um and uh and and let's just follow that for fun uh with uh, an insight check uh to kind of flesh that out just a teeny bit more it's my modifying six i love all these physical dice rolls i i uh 20. Trying, hey. to, trying to do it, you know. Sure. So, so. I almost uh, abandoned it because, like, they really went badly earlier. <laughs> well, it's serving you right this second. Um, you, uh, you kind of put two and two together. You're looking at this map, and it almost feels like an old, um, like, like this was like, because of the nature of this, it feels like there was like a sensation. Like when you look at like a tourist map of a city you've spent a lot of time in and you're just like, you are making this look like a place that <laughs> is like so much cooler than it is. This is like one of those maps where like, <laughs> it's like there was an expanding frontier at one point. Um, and like I said, there's all these place names and um, intuitively you kind of get that like, these are either real places that... Um, uh probably don't exist anymore that were being starting to be developed that probably aren't there anymore or are just like ideas for things that were going to be down this peninsula at some point like it's if like you go Disney to the world <laughs> it, it, i mean it's like that weird like like i said if you look at like a tourist map of san francisco and it's like just I don't know. There's like a weird optimism to to this map. Yeah, there's like a bunch of like on. whales swimming out in the ocean and like <laughs> or, or or yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Marine oh, Life you... Observatory coming. Yeah, yeah exactly. Twenty twenty four. And then you coming drive soon. there, and it's like a roundabout, and like with they cleared no, trees else. and that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's like going to the Salton Sea and seeing like yeah, Salton just street City. Yeah, street like, sign, street sign, nothing. Just fucking nothing out there. Um, you just have this sense of like a very optimistic map from the past, um, a more distant past even. Um, and that kind of strikes you uh, in a way that's sort of consistent with some things you've seen, but also kind of, um, I don't know, reveals something about the past here. Uh, uh, as you're kind of looking around and making these assessments, uh, you hear uh, coming down the stairs uh, to your left, you just hear kind of some footsteps and these voices <coughs> kind of uh, <sighs> like some some conversations not close enough for you to quite uh, hear and just someone laughing and some kind of like, like a uh, voice conversation as um, these two um, figures uh, walk down the stairs. Uh, uh, they're, they're um, these, these two um, 
kind of middle-aged um, women, uh, maybe between, I don't know, 40 and 55, 60. Um, and they're, they're in um, kind of like finer traveling clothes, um, traveling robes that are um, like, like dirty, but they're clearly like very well made. Um, and they uh, come and sit down and even um, one of them kind of gives your table a wave and, and a smile as they come down and uh, they sit down at a table, not right directly next to you because that's weird and kind of, I would say, rude. <laughs> but, uh, they, sit, they sit in the, the establishment as well at another table um, and kind of post up or talking amongst themselves. They came down from like where the rooms presumably are? That that's the impression that you would get. Okay. Yes. Uh, Sorry. Do we? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, should we uh, chat them up? I guess. I guess maybe. Shall we? Um, I think we want to ask about mining. Um, shall we try Played to? Play a little cooler on the sister. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I felt like it was working. I mean, I, you know, I, I know she's not real, and and I was feeling kind of sad, yeah. honestly. Um, I feel like just I yelling think... murder as loud as possible in any conversation, mm. you know, is if you can get away with it, yeah. is a great idea. It, it usually like makes something happen. It's an eye opener. <laughs> it's a com real yeah. conversation starter. <laughs> As you guys are chatting amongst yourselves and the uh, other table is um, chatting amongst themselves, um, you see uh, Bay comes, uh, you know, back first, um, pushes out of a door, uh, a swinging door, um, with a couple of uh, skillets in hand and some appropriate handling um, fabric uh, to not burn herself on said skillets, uh, sets them down at the table alongside your drinks and is like, so you don't want to touch the metal of these because these are very, very hot. Um, please enjoy. Let me know if there's anything else that you need from me. We just hear the the fajita. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, these these have been they're burning, burning hot. And you lamp. Feel... <laughs> <laughs> you you wonder to yourself what what the exact situation is in the kitchen. Um, because uh, it was pretty quick. <laughs> they did come out pretty quick. Uh, <clears throat> but you wonder at that for a moment and. Uh, and uh, she also goes, as she's walking away, she's like, gives you like a five for those whenever kind of mm -hmm. hand gestures mm -hmm. uh, and, and goes back behind the door. I got it. Uh, so, broken up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gaelic's like head in hands, but also <laughs> like looking at the skillet, you know. Let's eat. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think Ciro says, Cheers. Uh, if this is the first like hot meal, uh, I guess in a couple days. And it's another um, brunch of note <laughs> you yeah. engaged in. in another exactly. Area. We we be brunching it up. What's um, traveling without him? And then I think that <laughs> I think like as we're as we're <laughs> eating, um, I just want to keep my ears peeled for uh, these mysterious women's interaction with the barkeep and their conversation amongst themselves while we like house our meals. Cool. Um, for sure. They, um, they both, uh, as, um, your, your foods brought out by, um, the, uh, bartender, um, uh, Bay, um, they, they're like, uh, first off, you're distinctly getting some like big, wacky older gal energy off these people. Like they're just like doing a yeah. I'll just say you know how we are. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's always like, oh, yeah. <laughs> real mom yeah. on the loose vibes. <laughs> yeah, you're getting some mom on the loose vibes, and they're like. Hey, babe, good to see you. Good morning. We need some air of the dog, if you know what I'm saying. They're just mm -hmm. doing this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and like, she's like, Can I get you some breakfast? And, like, you know it just 100%. It's back and forth. And that's, that's the vibes coming off of their kind of group. Uh, 
and uh, Bay, you know, goes back and starts uh, get started on some food for them as well. And uh, yeah, are they being loud enough to where it would be not weird to start a conversation with them from our table? There, make a make a, an inside check. I'll uh, I'll give him the help action. Sure, sure, absolutely. You guys are both kind of uh, just sussing things out. And you're just here. like looking at me in the eyes, knowingly as I'm trying to <laughs> decide. I'm like, I I'm like pu- pushing your head more towards so your ear <laughs> is facing <laughs> more. Okay, inside uh, plus six. Nineteen. Yeah, um, they they are talking uh, pretty freely. Uh, they don't seem they don't have like very covert of energy about them uh, in this space. Um, they're both really um, they're both really um, articulate uh, individuals. Uh, they they are like I said, it's like you got like the wacky you know wacky energy, but you've also got this kind of like. Um, really like always speaks in complete sentences and is very well enunciated kind of vibe from both of them. You get a distinct feeling they're probably not from around here. Uh, Money from this. <laughs> you definitely get that. Dis- you definitely get that distinct impression for sure. Um, and in just kind of like uh, ready. assessing, <laughs> <laughs> assessing. Yeah. Sarah's already like, scratching her <laughs> palms as she believes yeah. that money is coming to her. Zero catches uh, that flavor um, for sure. And um, in listening to just sort of the quality of their... Um, in listening to the character of their conversation, they seem like they're maybe academics or something. Like, um, And uh, you don't they're 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 chatting. They're kind of comparing notes about. Um, they're, they're, you, you actually um, listen in for a minute, and you hear they're sort of discussing like um, the the geography, and and they're saying some uh, place names that are familiar from this like kind of comical map you just looked at, even. Uh, and you know, they're they're kind of like comparing notes about some sort of general local issues, but in a way that feels sort of ha- has a layer of remove from it, if that makes sense. I speak up a little bit and say... Oh, hold on, is, hold on, one second. Also, they're kind of keep looking over at you guys because they would... You you feel in your bones with like, that check. They are just waiting for a reason to say words at you. Yes. Uh, because that is the energy they came equipped right. with. <clears throat> so, mm, did, did you ladies get the this, this steak as well? This is quite delicious, I must say. Uh, one of them, ha- uh, a sh- sort of like shorter cut, like medium brown hair. Um, uh, uh, woman looks, <laughs> no, no, medium. It, it, it's <laughs> like a, okay. it's medium brown, shorter length, uh, no, like uh, mousy brown uh, hair. Uh, looks over, is like, no, it smells so good though. Thank you, thank you for the recommendation. I think there's only one thing on the menu, so I imagine that's what I'm getting. But I am <laughs> truly relieved that you're enjoying it because they're not all winners. So sad to hear. I, I, we were both sadly, sadly informed that we had missed the eggs benedict by one day. Um, but we were not. Oh my god, it's so good! Oh, like that <laughs> pains me. But I'm, I'm glad that you lovely ladies were able to enjoy it. May, may I ask what, what brings you through these parts? Uh, it, it, this is my, this is our first time here, and uh, it doesn't strike me as a. A common tourist destination in general. The uh, the other woman speaks up. Has has more silvery hair. Kind of maybe in the same age range. Um, she she's like, we haven't seen travelers through here since since uh, maybe in this last week. Uh, I I think maybe because of the whole boast thing going on right now. But it has been so slow. 
Uh, and and we're it's so interesting to see you as well. We're, uh, well, I'm trying, what, what, did, what, what did you ask? I'm trying to remember the, the um, phrase. Oh, I asked what, what brought them through here, given the, uh, yeah, yeah, it okay. doesn't seem like a traveler's destination. They're like, you know, it's not. It's not honestly <laughs> a, a destination of note for most people, but we're, uh, we're not here on, on normal business. Um, oh. we're, we're here and have been for some time uh in the wonderful hospitality with like a smile that acknowledges that she knows this is like a boondocks middle of nowhere and maybe speaks to a, a level of taste that they might be accustomed to she she says we, we've been enjoying the hospitality of this fine establishment for some time and uh yes we're here um doing research on on um sort of the history of this region uh on uh she, she she smiles and is like just to, to some perhaps to some that's fascinating certainly to us at least and we appreciate your interest uh but it's a sabbatical of sorts she says very intriguing we i noticed you studying the uh the map possibly with some humor uh, it it looked to us like it may not be qu quite up to date um from what we've seen it seems to be rather desolate here these days she uh the uh the first woman uh who who addressed you with the short massy brown hair um speaks up and and says uh says there is an ironic charm to it, isn't there, uh, in reference to the map, and, and goes, by the way, my name is Enneth, uh, and the, the other woman waves and goes, my name is Othel. Enneth? Uh, and Enneth and Othel. E-N-N-E-T-H and A-T-H-E-L. All right. Uh, and, uh, she continues, uh, she says, my name is Cyrano. I... Cyrano. Yes. It's a pleasure to meet you. And this is my lovely traveling companion. Uh, Galecchia. Uh, <laughs> 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 She says, Galakia, that's a fascinating name. Beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, as she looks over and says, uh, uh, Enneth, uh, the shorter haired. Uh, I get that all the time. Uh, Mostly for me. <laughs> <laughs> they love your banter right now. They are just so on the fucking level right now. Eating it up. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're here for it in a big way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and their breakfast is taking a little bit longer, um, leading you to surmise you might have uh, indeed had the hot plate uh, plates uh, heating that were intended for them whenever they got downstairs <laughs> and a fresh <laughs> breakfast is being made for them. So uh, so you guys put that together. They um, burned it. Uh, Awful uh, chimes in uh, after talking about the uh, sort of ironic charm of the map. Uh, and says, I don't know if they keep it up as a, as a keepsake or some kind of small joke for them to appreciate. But, uh, you know, the, the histories of the Southern territories and, and their, their old, the, the old aristocracies that once extended out to this area are our sort of, uh, the other guy's like, Bailiwick? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh they're just absolutely doing bits and loving it uh and the uh she continues uh the longer silver haired woman awful continues and goes we're sort of on an extended fact finding mission about this greater area we have lots of um hypotheses that we're testing out but honestly it's uh it's wonderful work being able to spend time out in the countryside and, uh, you know, invest your time in the things that you love. There used to be a really um, uh, 
good mining here, correct? And and that sort of waned in the last few years. Uh, I I used to reside in Vost and and uh, never made it down this way, but um, but I wish I had to see it in in its glory. What what came about to make it uh it less um, productive in its mining? Uh, and if um <clears throat> starts nodding her head emphatically and goes. Uh, that's exactly right. And the economic forces of the falls of these aristocracies is of particular interest to me. Um, without knowing your age and not being so rude as to ask it, I would say, I would assume that perhaps before your time, the changes fell into place that led to this area's eventual decline. Uh, she is just so happy to talk about this uh, specialty understanding that she has of this area in a with people who aren't from here. Uh, she goes, well, the mines actually propped up the, uh, acted as an economic backbone to the peninsula at large uh, in days of yore. Uh, and uh, in fact, some of the uh, greater aristocracies of the region were propped up by the money of these mines, which they sponsored um, in sometimes uh, under working conditions that were sometimes brutal. They uh, thoroughly exploited the resources of the area to their great, great gain. Um, speaking toward it, its fall, eventually, uh, you know, it the mines gradually began to produce less uh, and the economic economic circumstances gradually changed as they want to do. And then Awful kind of kicks in and says, uh, to say nothing of the fact that there are many other extraneous factors that made it more dangerous to be doing work around here. Speaking of such extraneous factors, just as a bit of as a bit bit of uh, explanation of, of why we are here, um, unfortunately, we're we're here on a bit of sad business. My my sister, who is um, her closest friend, has disappeared, and and uh, we're led to believe that they may have been head, headed this way um, towards a place that, that now I'm becoming ever more concerned uh, about. We were led to believe that they may have been headed towards the Bernanda State, which I understand to be somewhere south of here. Um, and I've heard very troubling rumors that there's been quite a lot of dangerous activity in that area. Is there, Do you happen to know anything about this? Is, has this contributed at all to the, the plight of this area? 100% register and you see uh, in their eyes that recognition not a problem here when you say the bernanda state i mean they're both like lit up uh no problem yes 100 percent triggered and uh just just roll for me a roll, roll, <laughs> roll, roll that deception check that you know i'm getting ready to ask for this all this is all my 20. um before nat oh, 20 nice, nice. so yeah. 28 what is so what is that 28 yeah that's a uh, very. You want to cool. marry me now? <laughs> I was yeah, going to well, give you the help action because I because I was like, wait, before you say what it is, I'll they nod already at did. you and didn't need it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> they're like this. Oh, <laughs> they they are so happy to be just talking with people who are like not the people they see every day. Um, this. Breaching this topic lights them up so entirely <laughs> right away. They're just like, oh my God, the Bernand is the And like, you, it's like just uh, one thing after another paced out so fast that you're just like trying to keep yes. things straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, uh, hmm. so they're like, that's not the only focus of the work that we're doing here, but that is certainly one of the main focuses of the work we're doing here. We're discussing, in our thesis, we're talking about comparative, 
comparative uh, through time analyses of the old aristocracies of the Southern Peninsula and the ways that this has shifted and all of the, you know, uh, economic and other factors that have led to these, uh, you know, we're, we're writing greater histories of the events that have occurred on the peninsula. So honestly, you, I'm so glad you found us because I don't know who <laughs> else you could ask about this, who would even be prepared to talk. Us you know? either. And uh, they uh, basically reveal uh, that uh, they have been working on a, a large chronicle about this area. Um, they're trying to parse out fact from fiction surrounding the Bernand legacy. Um, they reveal they're from the city of Ellesmere, uh, which is located uh, to the north and west, if you're to go straight north of the peninsula, and then travel northwest from there. Uh, a large, um, the have largest heard of city. This before? It hasn't come up in conversation, but is it, on, um, is it marked on the map? The name sounded familiar. It is. It is. It okay. is marked on the yeah. map, and in fact, it <clears> is familiar <throat> to Ciro because yeah. Ciro was actually raised in the nearabouts proximity okay. to mm -hmm. Ellesmere. Yeah, and Ciro would recognize it also as being nearby. Uh, the Hetzvik Academy uh, sort of exists on the outskirts of Ellesmere. It's, it's a little, it's not remote or anything, but it's not within the city proper. It's out on its own plot, um, a little far out. Um, and it is definitely the city of note in the south, um, other than Vost. And it's probably about three times, in fact, the size of Vost. Um, it's, it's a very important port city. Uh, there are yeah, it, it just has um, much more weight in the area than Vost does. But it's further away than you are to Vost. So anyway, you recognize the city place that they say they're from, where they do their work, study, perhaps teach. Um, they, the, You get the impression that they're sort of on just like a really well-funded sabbatical <clears throat> doing uh, university-type research. Uh, because they wrote a really good thesis and they're just kind of in the cups in general down here, uh, enjoying their time that they have to do this. Um, they sort of say, um, yeah, the Bernan estate is fascinating. Um, the, the Bernan family itself, um, you know, was, uh, is an aristocracy that was here well before the area was like, highly thriving and to to them is owed the initial developments that allowed it to do so um there there was toward the the middle end of this sort of period of prosperity from where that map uh you know was developed in um the bernans are said to have sort of um they they were in league with but some people say they fell under the sway of a uh, wizard who went by the name of Caltreth, um, who had been, <sighs> records are unclear, but it seems like they had been expelled from Lysenvelt, if you're, if you're familiar with the city. Um, they're, it's hard to to determine exactly why, and, and there's a there's a curious dip in the the um, amount of record keeping that that correlates with the goings on of the council during that period of time. They say, um, mm. but uh, he he's sort of rumored to have been the uh, a preeminent specialist in in transmutation and a handful of other uh, magical studies. Um, uh, for his time, truly renowned. Um, and uh, it, it said it said that he was involved with some some pretty controversial experimentation. Is the is the is the Bernan estate no more? The Bernan, okay. Eneth, um, Eneth says the Bernan estate fell into ruin. Um, perhaps. Uh, 120 some odd years ago, um, there was a great, some kind of accident and structural issues happened there. Um, it's interesting trying to piece together the, the entire stories is, is 
what exactly we're doing here right now is trying to do exactly the work of determining what happened with the Bernand estate. Um, it's sort of the linchpin of a lot of the theorizing that we've been doing. And we know that the estate grounds were themselves devastated, but there's so many strange accounts and rumors surrounding it um, that parsing fact from fiction is the entire name of the game. And we know, though, as a fact, that it is extremely dangerous now that we're here and having talked with people we didn't realize uh, coming here that it was beyond our abilities to actually uh, plumb these depths ourselves. <clears throat> Do you know any, um, any, have you spoken to anyone that has, has been there? I mean, we, we don't want to have to go this road, but we, you know, our, our loved one has to be retrieved. And, and if that's where she is, um, anything you could tell us would be so useful, um, hopefully, in, in finding her and, and keeping our lives in the process. For my sister. Um, she, she nods empathetically. Um, uh, Awful nods empathetically. And Enneth says, finding firsthand accounts, uh, even of what is happening right now at the estate is extremely difficult, both because the area is so sparsely populated, but also because apparently the area is particularly dangerous of late. Um, and um, we haven't been able to pursue any of our leads, so we're sort of stuck here um, for the moment, um, asking around. I can say that while it's not a firsthand account, um, Layman, uh, the smithy in town, his grandfather apparently was an early, in years past, uh, did some exploration of the estate and has some very interesting uh, notes about it. Um, so I would suggest speaking to him, perhaps. Um, and then um, Aneth chimes in and goes, and honestly, if you haven't talked to Treston yet, I'm, I'm sure you did on your way into town. Uh, he would be the other person to talk to about, you know, the goings on recently uh, within the area. We, we haven't had the pleasure yet, though, though we'll be seeking him out before we make our way south. What, what is your lady's opinions of uh, Treston? There, Was he a helpful uh, source? Uh, Awful's like, Awful's like, he's a, he's a, he's a striking and dedicated local leader who's been nothing but helpful, but has his own interest. Um, he is not, has next to zero interest in the Bernanda state, uh, in specific, but he is, uh, very committed uh, in his um, ideology and, and a, a very good steward of the community. Um, and then, and then kind of pauses for a second quizzically and goes like, what on earth would your sister want to do at the Bernand estate? And they both just start kind of cracking up. <laughs> I myself uh, have no idea, but I think most likely it's, Nothing to do with my sister's interests whatsoever, but rather this this uh, man of ill repute, this Lothario that she fell under the sway of. See, I I couldn't don't, pull her I, away. I never met him myself, but I there was something wizardly about him. So perhaps that could explain his interest. I I, I know not of such things. I know only because... of my sister. <laughs> Because you've already accomplished the primary deception of convincing them that your story is fundamentally true, um, make a no. You don't have to do another check. the The work's done here. They believe you. Uh, okay. They 
they because they weren't seriously questioning me. They they were making a joke about what would she want, and I was providing a correct, correct, relatively correct, plausible correct. like answer. Totally, totally. So I think the, the lie is the lie is done, and they're on board. Uh, they they both hear that and, and are nodding and go like, honestly, that that you know any any kind of the, the wizards would be poking around there is is fascinating. I I can't imagine. Um, if anything, that's that's some. Um, concerning given the devastation uh, of the estate um i i would wonder why they say you know i i'm we haven't been able to confirm that that is where she went but that's the best that we have so far however aside from the Bernard estate itself it sounds like there's definitely troubles in that area do, do you have any idea what the these troubles plaguing the south are Um, they, they go, um, Awful goes, honestly, from talking conversations with Treston, we've gotten the distinct impression that apparently there's been a string of murders and, and in the recent past, um, the, the, the roads, the, the traveling even to get there seems to be, um, what, where the jeopardy would lie, but but he he doesn't he doesn't um, he doesn't have interest in in the academic issues that we're here to study, and seems much more um, meant to impress upon us the um, threat to life and limb if we if we should um, uh, try to travel um, without uh, you know means to defend ourselves and. Uh, that is not that wasn't the purpose initially. You know, we're we're not warriors, they say. I kinda of laugh. They're like, we're 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 academics here, you know, on the on the verge of a mystery. We're we're not uh, we're not here to kill. Yeah, you or could have fooled me. I see a I see a warrior's heart in you both. Just cracking <laughs> up and they're just fully upending um uh, glasses of mead, or uh, uh, rather, cups of mead. They've they've been issued along with their steak scones, which came midway. In this conversation. Uh, it's, and it's they, those are show. those are really sizzling, though. Like you're like <laughs> you're you're like I feel like they just kind of hit this real quick, and maybe maybe those ones are better. <laughs> you yeah. wonder. It seems um, as though uh, any of the information we've heard in in, in our travels um, around around Boston and. and up till this point, that that the that um, the danger of the road be, it keeps being mentioned, and is it bandits or is there something about the terrain, or do you, do you guys have any idea like what something is even dangerous? Enith mm-hmm. um, goes. Enith um, goes. Once Treston realized that we were academics. Um, he did everything in his power to discourage us trying to seek out uh, information specifically at the Bernanda State, which we are fascinated by. Um, uh, he, he doesn't wish to put people at risk um, who, who would have an interest in going there, but it is, it is from what we can gather very likely that that location itself um, is is particularly hostile um, to to head toward, and it seemed that everything he had to say was an effort to discourage our going. Um, so uh, I've overheard uh, amidst the local population some talk of uh, goblins that had set up some sort of, you know. Uh, Acting as highwaymen and, and uh, harrying travel and possibly uh, killing these miners, but I don't know that it exactly is that. Um, I would suggest speaking with him if that's your interest. We we shall. Your your um, your insight and, and knowledge has been so fascinating to to speak with, and um, and thank you so much for all of your all of your uh, your insight. They both crack up uh, just because they're like, <laughs> we are so happy to speak with anyone who cares at all about what we're talking about. Because literally, 
nobody here gives a fuck about it. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, and uh, they they're like um, that. That was Aneth says that, and Awful goes. If if you do make it down there in search of your sister, if you're going there anyway, please let us know. If you find if you find anything of value in that area, we are we are so starved for information uh, that is either um, you know like a a primary source information that if if it can be obtained for us, um, we would be immensely grateful and and and. You know, we're here for a time, and 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 we're fairly well funded, uh, she says. So you know, we're we're happy to share that with you because we need something of worth to come out of this. Otherwise, you know, we'll be laughed out of uh, the halls of academia that we call our home. Well, that's the last thing that I would want for either of you, lovely ladies. The obviously our main concern here is my sister, but. If we should unfortunately have to make our way to the Bernard estate, we'd be more than happy to apprise you of anything that we, we find, for we have truly no interest in such things, aside from the welfare of my sister. That being said, uh, just as a mere bit of curia, would, would you happen to know anything more about this, this wizard culture? Is, is there anything else that you could say about him? They're like, um, uh, um, Awful goes, no, it's fascinating because the the records at the time are so clear. His name, this Caltreth, appears in earlier documents of the time. Some kind of commotion clearly occurred surrounding his exodus um, out of Leisenfeld. But, you know, it, it's the strangest thing because they were so meticulous at the time. Um, in the record keeping, and yet we find this curious gap um, that surrounds this individual, and, and it's it's it, it's lost to time if it's not physically located on those grounds. So that you you've you've hit upon the primary mystery for us, the thing that would make could potentially make this make sense in our work. And uh, and we have no answers here uh, from this hotel, as pleasant and joyful as it is. Well, de detailed record keeping is like water to me. So if there's any way that we can put these records right, if we come across any information, you will be the first that we tell. Uh, they're just so thrilled to hear that. And... Uh, you know they've 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 offered some kind of compensation if you return any primary source information, and uh, and um, uh, and if uh, says um, we'll be here and and we thank you so much for your honestly just your curiosity and interest in these matters. We hope also that you find your sister and that she's well and that this Lothario is no longer in the picture. Um, so you have well. our best wishes. As do we, as do we. Um, do, I just want to ask really quick, just because they're, f I know it's a really large city, but be because they're from academia and they are from near where I'm from, from, do either of their names or likeness seem familiar to me at all? Make a, make a insight or no, a history check. Okay, let me see what I'm working with. Oh, that is five. <laughs> no, they don't seem familiar. I mean, you can ask. Uh, no. If, uh, you know, if, <laughs> nope. No, maybe maybe they were both your teachers. Um, Wacky <laughs> girls. I mean, you can you can ask if they have any kind of association with the Hedswick Academy if you want to. Uh, what what uh, branch of academia um, are you historians, or do you have anything to do with the the arcane, or um, what uh, is it mostly like re record keeping and history that uh, you're involved with? They're like um, they go. We we work with the the great civic library in Ellesmere. We're we're um, involved not not specifically in the arcane, but certainly in the history of the arcane. 
Um, and uh, these these are um, these types of matters are our specialties. Um, you know, uh, and it goes. You know, my my specific expertise deals more with the um, economic uh, and socio historic um, relationships between these mm-hmm. things. And awful is a little bit more awful goes, and mine is a little bit more of the um, uh, you know uh, nebulous, arcane, and um, religious and spiritual traditions that that would uh, surround uh, some of these stories. So, you know, they they appear to be doing like a partnership with different academic um, specialties. But okay. uh, you said that your specialties were light around the religious and spiritual. You you wouldn't happen to have ever heard of a, a rare manuscript called, I believe, the the art of speaking fiction, <laughs> would you? I'll make a, a quick um, two things. Okay. Um, I was about to ask okay. thing, because I presume that they were had nothing to do with that, but I remember the Great Library was something I was supposed to look into from the beginning. I was going to ask if they knew anyone this, that was involved in that. <laughs> this, this place that they're referring to hasn't specifically been on the radar as brought up by a uh, NPCs. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought someone but, had mentioned uh, a great one. Maybe it wasn't that one. Hetzvik Academy's Academy, library, yeah. um, but but I mean, certainly any large city would have like um, repositories of knowledge and stuff like that. Um, the the awful says with like a kind of like a knowing and understanding look says. You know, I, I haven't heard of the book that you're describing, but it's important to understand that things in the in the spheres of um, theological um, pursuits and studies are so much different now than they were a uh, hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. That the the consolidation of power, the complete lack of oversight and the zealotry of the, you know, these religious orders that are acknowledged as sort of the, the great, any of the greater religious orders that, that we might commonly know about have done so much work to suppress anything that they consider to be heretical text, anything they consider to be a challenge to their fundamental principles. And, and we do not live in a world the 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 cost of traditional history and literature alone in this consolidation of power with these religious orders has been staggering and is truly a shame. It's criminal, really. She she nods knowingly. She says it should be criminal. <laughs> um, is what she says on the note of these sort of lost um, these lost. Um, texts these lost stories uh from a period where um you could surmise from what she said there was a little bit more um tolerance of uh you know philosophies that that maybe either run parallel to or outside of um mainstream thought um because of a con- uh, a consolidation of power in theological spaces so did she answer your question about the academy uh, I think I just asked like about the arcane, oh, okay. um, and I think Ciro's a little hesitant to like specifically bring up okay. the academy, knowing that they work at like a civic, right? Yeah. library for the most part. You were um, oblique enough to sort of determine that it's probably not in specific the Hetzvik Academy that they work with, knowing that that academy is outside of the city of Ellesmere, and it seems like they're associated right. with a library that probably is inside it so okay um i think i think at at this point um knowing that the like the what is his name um treston and also the smithy would have more information i think um ciro's finished her her food and um would look to you gaelic and and uh 
and say, well, shall we shall we make our way to more information uh, and get get closer to the mystery of what's happened to your sister? Yes, it's very pressing. Um, we should definitely get back on the trail to help save my sister. I, I was... pat you on the back <laughs> <laughs> with a knowing look. <laughs> It was lovely to your acquaintance, uh, ladies, and uh, we will be sure to be in touch if there's anything that we discover that might be of use to you. Absolutely. They both stand up and just vigorously shake your hands. <laughs> they're just this. They're going to talk about this for like three days, you know, <laughs> and they're just so stoked to have, have met you two and, and had a conversation uh, as enlivened uh, about their field of interest. They, um, you guys head out of uh, the last pilgrim, having squared up. Uh, I assume you. Yes, uh, I did. All right. I, what was the I squared up down. at the bar? I'll get. I'll get the bar. Okay, I think. You... It was, it was only seven. seven for the two drinks, okay. and then it and was five um, for the food. Yeah. So I wrote. I I put down seven. Okay. Just, it it doesn't okay. even change your gold amount on D and D Beyond. I think until you've spent like that entirety of a gold in silver. You really, sense. you really wish it would show you the decimal. You know, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. So I feel like I spent no money. <laughs> is it, like, what do you five E? It is a decimal system, and that used to not be. Yeah. Um. So you think it would do that, but it doesn't. Yeah. All right. It's no, it's strange. Really it just a... at some point I'm going to go to spend a gold, and it's going to be like you don't have a whole gold. Well, like, I also what? think Electrum might stand in the middle of silver and gold, possibly. Um, oh, weird. So it's, maybe uh, it's not a decimal system. I, that's, uh, mm. You know what? In my world, there's no Electrum. One All silver, right. one-tenth of electrum a gold. Electrum sounds like fucking like some Bitcoin-ass shit. Yeah. yeah, it fucking does sound Ethereum. like a, a... Yeah, exactly. It truly does. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised no one started a uh, bullshit currency called Electrum. Oh, it just feels seriously. like such a thing that would be out yeah. there. But oh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe it is, too. Eh, I don't know. Sure it is, Everyone always ignored Electrum before. But... <laughs> I mean, it's so just gold and silver mixed. So, like, it's not that mysterious. <laughs> it's just stupid. It's, it's, it is a three-way <laughs> mixture of gold, silver, and electronics. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys exit the last pilgrim. Uh, you uh, put some uh, currency on the counter. You wave goodbye to uh, Bay Tree as you're on your way out. Uh, belly's full of your New York uh, spelled in a crazy fantasy way, steak skillets. Um, and you re-enter the town square again. Uh, where do you guys head? Here's the deal, like, these were very lovely women, but I would, and I would feel terrible about doing this, but I, I'm having a hard time rationalizing how we wouldn't try to steal um, their really well-funded <laughs> expeditions uh, coin purse. Yes, I agree. I think, um, I think, well, there, there's a couple different ways we could go about this. Um, knowing that there are not many um, patrons staying at this tavern, I could easily uh, scale some kind of wall or fence behind the inn and go searching in rooms while you uh, maybe do some sweet talking of either the town leader or the smithy to understand. I think, I think it was that the smithy's grandfather had... Um, had some kind of information from long ago. Okay. So and there was a journal, uh, I believe. If you want to, if you want to divide and conquer, um, I'd be more than happy to uh, to make a quick a quick dash up to a room and and um, maybe uh, maybe we keep his law somewhere centrally located in case things go awry for me. Yes. Um... Well, I think she's just across the street from the end. <laughs> yeah, I think we just leave I think her nearby. I think we're making a grand total of like a hundred feet walking between bink, any of these situations. Bink, bink, bink. It is like that. It's maybe yeah. uh, you're talking about a half a football field kind of okay. square that you guys are sort of inhabiting. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, as long as I have an easy escape route in case um, 
I don't think that they have any information we need. So this is a bridge just waiting to be burned. Yeah, I mean, because the only benefit really is if they wanted to pay us for some kind of information. But if we take their money, it's really not a concern. <laughs> Well, and also, I, I have a, I have this strange feeling that that leaving the estate may not be like a very simple. We may like need to take a boat, or um, there's a good chance we won't have any reason to return to this town after that, or we may have to leave that it hastily. Let's take away one good reason from returning to this town because I'd be happy not to. <laughs> Sounds perfect to me. All right, I will. Um, um, I'll go I, visit. I, can I can I volunteer to you guys to roll just uh, an insight check? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you guys to do. That. <laughs> I think you'll realize this is stupid. Fifteen. Oh, I can't see it anymore. Uh, that's only a 12 for me. I, I will only chime in that with a 15 insight, you do feel like there's, um, there's a couple more conversations to be had here and that if you're going to do anything overtly criminal, that probably getting those out of the way might be worth your time before. For engaging in overtly criminal, because you can always come back okay. to that. Very Just right. with a fifteen, <laughs> I will only say that. Not to discourage you from doing anything overtly criminal, but that the timing of it may may benefit toward doing it towards the end of the um, interactions you might have in mind. I suppose doing this at like eleven and. 10, 10, 11 in the morning is maybe not the best time. <laughs> because it's such a small town that if anything happens, it's like it takes nothing for it to be on alert. All right. Um, let's yes. postpone. Yeah, let's do you, postpone. Do you, do you want to revisit the, uh, the ever so lovely blacksmith or uh, mm-hmm. this, what I can only oh. assume, despite all descriptions, is a prick, uh, trust him. I have this this strange feeling that that it may not be it could be helpful, but I wonder how helpful it is going to be to know more about the immense danger we face. Um, I don't know what kind of preparation I could do myself to change our fortune there. Um, so I think, I think maybe if, if we get any kind of grains of information from this, this, um, local town leader, um, besides him trying to discourage us from going there, um, maybe return to the black blacksmith won't be necessary. Uh, I, I but he 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 had, his grandfather had first, so there's the journal of his grandfather, which allegedly had a firsthand account of it. And so I, I think like a hundred and hundred and fifty years ago, right? Yeah, but it sounds like that's when it one hundred twenty years ago is when it fell. Oh, so right. it might actually be. It's more recent than that. If it's a grandfather, mm. and the oh. so he might, he would have explored the runes then, I guess. Perhaps, uh, yeah, but yeah. a long time uh, ago. Okay, okay, um, yeah. Well, I guess I mean I guess that would be reasonably useful. Um, the thing is, it's a book that we could try to steal can, or get, yes, and we can yes. bring that with us, and it can have information, which is nice. That is because very people true. talking, we it's very we... cumbersome and takes time, and you know, especially a a uh, sounds like uh, someone who the other man we're thinking of speaking to sounds like someone who isn't really interested in anyone even exploring. Not um, going to be helpful. <laughs> I think maybe we keep that one short. Let's go back to the smithy and, and speak with him. And maybe you go inside and I'll, um, as long as we're not attached to speaking to the town leader, if you want to go inside and speak with him, um, I could sort of walk around and see if, if we had to steal this book. Should we talk we to the town leader first? 
before we <laughs> do another stealing action. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. okay. Everything just that always is gonna go there. So you're gonna... No, I, lo- I love. Okay. This, okay. Yeah. 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 You know, you're do. right. But yeah. let's just go no, talk right. to this boring guy, and then <laughs> we'll pop yes. back over to the okay. old. Okay. We'll talk to the boring man, and and I'll keep my hands. <laughs> We'll where talk can to the them. boring man. <laughs> <laughs> um, old, tri- uh, old, old civic leader over here, because that's what gets us up in the morning, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, we plod over to Treston's like office yeah, or house or whatever. You trudge, yeah. you trudge <laughs> heads hung low uh, to the presumed <laughs> residence of Treston. Um, you see, uh, you see a, um, kind of crude sign, um, on the building that you've been indicated, uh, to go to, to speak with him. It says HQ, um, Farm Co-op, uh, Miners Association, uh, and that's just a sign sort of to the right that's, like, very, like, um, sh- sort of shittily made, carved into wood. Very provincial. In, in a- in an amateurish sort of way. Um, you guys uh, knock on the door? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, you... you uh, Let me get shouted wait. to the old, like, fake knock on the door. <laughs> uh, you, you, uh, you guys uh, wait a beat, and you hear some footsteps, and you hear, like, a, <clears throat> like a really loud, like, throat clear inside, uh, and uh, this, um, this, uh, guy um opens the door um it's uh presumably uh Treston, the local leader um he's he's uh he's wearing clothes that are like mid to low range like merchant attire not really like nobility type attire um but not like shittily made they're they're kind of like uh they're like um yeah, it's you don't get a, an idea that this guy's like wealthy per se. Um, he is sort of dark complected. He has a neatly trimmed beard, um, short hair, um, and he's like, "Hello, what can I do for you?" Um, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Where, I was like so. I was like watching your your Sorry, I was letting travel. Out. And no, you're was totally good. Uh, hello. We uh, hello. we're looking for some information about a lost friend. Can you help us? He goes. Can you tell me the name of your lost friend? I look up to the Gaelic. My dear sister's name is Imwin. 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 No less than him that I know. <laughs> she just went by Inwin. Our father was, well, best not to speak of it. But, uh, <laughs> his eyebrow raises just a teeny bit. We've, we followed her here. We think she may have been here or passed through. Um, she's absconded with a man of ill repute. And, uh, we think she may have headed south. Um, we've talked to several people like, in the town. Is he like a lady of the night, but a man? Um, quite possibly. Uh, I've, I've thankfully never met the gentleman, but um, he, well, certainly no gentleman, actually. Let me, I apologize for my poorly chosen words. Um, he's, a, you know, a real dirtbag. So he's a dirt bag. All right. Uh, you roll a uh, deception check for me. This guy seems like a little bit of a dipshit. <laughs> he seems like a fucking idiot. <laughs> 19. Boring and dumb. Damn. 19? He's like. It's a real double dirt... header. Every... <laughs> guy's a dirt bag. You say he's a dirt bag? All right. I, I don't, don't think I've seen him. He's a real Tommy don't, Salami. Don't think I've seen. You know, he, he asked for the description of him when you do the, the bit. It's like, I don't, don't think I've seen him when, honestly. Uh, so she ran Never off with some dirt bag. Yeah. Maybe we said don't that. like that. No. We, we can keep an eye out. We can keep an eye out for. Uh, I'd certainly what, uh, 
what would be uh we we think we may need to to head south because we had some we heard some news that she potentially might have gone further south and towards the coast um i we know that there that, that it's dangerous and and uh but we we are well equipped we're we're um not no strangers to to combat um so and obviously finding her is the most important thing um do you have any um any information about what what kind of dangers lie lie to the south from us if he if, if he goes um <clears throat> If you guys are trying to say you're some kind of cell swords or something, that's of interest to me because the roads south, they're very dangerous. And I'm sorry to report to you that Emwyn <laughs> sounds like she's probably in a great deal of danger if she did end up going down <laughs> south. So I just want you to know that you need to be prepared for the worst because there's a very good chance that she's no longer among the living. No. A pat Gaelic on the shoulder. Oh my, oh my god! <laughs> out of out of curiosity, <laughs> do you have any idea like what may have caused her to no longer be alive? Or I do, and in fact, uh, you you raise a subject to my attention that I am actually interested in uh, discussing. Given given that you may or may not be cell swords. Uh, I, Sarah uh, pulls I, I out work her with... crossbow and her dagger and sold like, the sword. smiles. For sale, for sale. This is all this is what we're talking about. <laughs> uh he goes he goes, Yeah, well, so I, I represent the local miners in the area that try to get the the ores and, and uh the product that they work for to market and, and it's important to say that they're in a great deal of uh risk in this industry anyway let alone the fact that the roads have become much less safe. There's been a string of murders of people traveling with their goods just to here. Uh, and it's my responsibility to make sure that they can conduct their work safely as much as I possibly have the ability to do so. And I'm willing to offer you in exchange for helping me to make the roads a safer place. I'm willing to offer you a bit of cash if that is the sort of work you're interested in taking on. And if you're heading down south, you're going right toward where I need you to go. Absolutely, Cash, and, and any information you have, because it seems uh, as though there's a bit of vagueness in describing this danger. If, if you know anything, I mean, we'll happily kill it because it's the direction we have to go. But yeah. Is this um, the kind of situation where a deposit would be involved? Because, you know, it, it's so dangerous to head down south. I will answer these questions one at a time. Firstly, <laughs> it's fucking goblins. They're fucking dangerous. They're down okay. south. There's a specific place that we believe they've been camped out. There's an old ruin to the south. It's full of goblins. And we need some help getting this cleaned up so people can do their work with dignity <laughs> and, and earn Respect. the living wage <laughs> they deserve. <laughs> uh, is, is, would this rune be the Bernan estate by any chance? Or is yep. This, yep. Yeah. Yep. So is it, this yep. is just riddled with goblins then. Uh, there's a band of marauding goblins who it is believed to post it up there. People don't like to go there usually because there's a bunch of superstitions because all the ghosts or whatever at the estate because there's a bunch of ghosts there. Uh, that's what they say. I don't give a shit about well, ghosts, but I do so give a shit about goblins. Gob and ghosts. Okay. Yeah, there's ghosts and goblins, I guess. I don't know. Well, I know there's goblins. People say there's ghosts. Okay. So, um, are these goblins from the local 341? These goblins are unaffiliated. We view them as scabs. Uh, they're taking away the hard-earned uh, fruits and labors of uh, all these hard-working miners that I'm here to defend. So and I will do that. To these this are some strike-breaking not... goblins here. They have crossed picket lines. Uh, I will give them a chance. Uh, we're willing to make negotiations, but honestly, I, okay. I see this only ending with bloodshed. You know. So for you. 
the the price per head, if that's what we're talking about, higher for the goblins than the ghosts, if they exist. I don't give a shit about ghosts. Okay. It's hard to turn okay. in an ear for a ghost as well. Also, by the way, I don't think there are ghosts. Oh, like, okay. that would be a great interest to us if there like are in, ghosts. In the, no, in the, you don't in the, believe that in the world? No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Okay. They ain't, they ain't ghosts. Okay. Why so you 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 kind of like of the mind like when we die we just die and rot that. into the okay sorry yeah I think I think we probably rot I think we probably get <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> rotten <laughs> yeah I agree if I can help I agree. settle any kind of an existential question for you I know for a fact that we rot I do too yeah I hate to tell you but I yeah I know that too <laughs> yeah. Um, All well, right, buddy. You, you're. I can tell you're an important guy, and we don't, we don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I can't tell if you guys are taking this seriously, but what I'm saying is, there's <laughs> there's goblins. Yeah, they've been assaulting my guys and miners on the road with their goods. There's a leader. His name is Grist. If you bring me back this motherfucker's head, I will pay you. Gold in the amount of 75 gold pieces I have in my power to offer a family heirloom with supposedly some kind of magic properties. I don't really know a whole lot about it. I know when I hold it that I know that it is magical. What kind of heirloom is this? It's like a, like a stick. Like a wand, hmm. okay. Yeah. Like a rod, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you said Grist is the yeah. leader. Yeah. And how okay. do we? Is there any distinguishing characteristics about this uh, this Grist? Do we know this this prick when we see him? He's he's got a bunch of old scars. He's missing his left eye, and he's he's, no he's like he's like ten percent bigger than the other goblins that he runs with. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think so, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say here? Got like a different badge. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Look, looks like, like, the, like the leader, like pretty easy to spot. Yeah, I like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah but well, I appreciate yeah. it very much. If you'd hit the road, uh, take care of these guys for me. It would make my life a lot easier. It would make a lot of my friends' lives a lot easier. Yeah. Do well, you know, uh... <laughs> do you know, sir, if, if um... If these goblins have any kind of weakness to to anything in particular, do they they seem to respond to fire or sweets? You guys, or um, I was God, you just took the joke right out of my fucking mouth. (laughs) (laughs) I was gonna go, yeah, they got a weakness to sweets. I don't fucking know. Uh, 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 no, I don't know. They, They. they're, they're, they're bandits, they're stealing shit, they have ill intent. I don't know of any weaknesses other than hard, hard steel probably do the job. All right. Well, we hope we I, can I, settle your problem for you. Just put it there and shake both your hands. You, uh, can you point us in the right direction? Of like, how do we get to this, uh, this goblin hellhole from here? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a really good map. If you go into this, uh, there's a tavern here in town. It's called uh, the Last Pilgrim. You see there, the building the literally like two doors down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a really <laughs> finely rendered map of the area. It's mm-hmm. got the Bernanda State very clearly labeled on it. Um, supposedly that's where they're at. I hope that's where they're at, and I hope you guys can take care of this for me. I'd appreciate it very much. Alrighty. Thank you. We will, we will not take up one moment longer of your I, time. I, <laughs> he just walks away and doesn't like, say goodbye. Uh, I irrationally don't want to take up more of your time than I need to. <laughs> like, there's Meta no question. actual reason for it. <laughs> Was this guy as obnoxious as this before we were not interested in talking to him? Uh, he was mostly that obnoxious but i did put a little stank on it i guess uh so you know the name i I, I just thought he was gonna be like 
I like picture like a willowy, tall, yeah. like like very stern, white haired well, leader well, man. Check for me, both of you, just to sort of in reflecting on that interaction. <clears throat> Twenty uh, one and, and uh fourteen was it? Twelve. Twelve? Yeah, yeah. With the twenty with the twelve, yeah, he just seems like he's kind of like a brusque prick. Uh with the twenty one and judging from the signs that were outside of his building, this is like a guy who's really taken on the mantle of like trying to run trade um for the town and like really like probably feels like he's a new kind of leader you know and and is trying to rep rep uh workers probably does take that shit seriously is he putting, but on, also, air? Is he putting on like blue collar errors or something <laughs> no you yeah. think he kind of comes from that and there actually aren't any nobility that choose to live out okay. here anymore so it's sort of like organic that he has the uh fits the bill of a uh labor leader that would be familiar <laughs> to us the the Newark accent, <laughs> the Newark accent, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Rhode Island guy. Yeah, uh, he he's uh, yeah has that has that uh, has taken the pill in the uh, you know strong for labor way uh, and takes it seriously. That's the vibe you get. Okay, <clears throat> I think as we leave, uh, Ciro's so like trigger happy to try to steal shit. That she um, would consult you, Gaelic, and say, and sort of. So, on one hand, we return 75 gold and potentially a magic item of some sort for a single goblin's head. Yeah. yeah seems doable. On the other hand, more information and gold just right now. What's yeah. more appealing to you? <clears throat> I, you know, I, I think reasonably we we could probably get both if we didn't yeah. so i mean we could probably rob the these uh lovely brunching ladies right now but we could also probably mm -hmm. rob them when we come back because I, I can't imagine that we're gonna be gone for that long yes. we could be but um so get reward rob yes i think that would be yeah. the best however i still think that there might be a great opportunity to rob this blacksmith coming up right now Yes. What um? What time of day is it right now? Is it is he, yeah. are we still hearing his hammer? He's he's strike? he's still at it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh okay. it's noon for sure. We can. We well, do. I don't even need to distract okay. him. You can clearly hear that he's at the goddamn band. <laughs> um, uh, I think I think we just we walk in that direction. Okay. I mean, I I can go talk to him because I could. Well, maybe it would be better if you went to reconnoiter inside of his building because you know if you can find i mean I, the likelihood of you just stumbling upon this journal i feel like from rummaging through his shit is probably pretty low um at first i was thinking maybe it would be better to avoid bringing it up if it then suddenly disappeared oh yes i agree um but i I, I have a pretty good ability to like physically search through things. It's it's, um, it's a roll of the die, but hey, yeah, let's go. <laughs> it's a roll of the die. Uh, I think, could we figure out just by walking towards this place we've already been, does he live like above or behind? Does he like have like a residence that's yeah. associated with the business? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's a, uh... It's um not not a huge structure. Um, it's a very well built, but um sort of a, you know, a, a humbler building. That's kind of um the um external part where the forges and all of that stuff is um out off the building for fire safety reasons, uh, presumably. Um, and you guys um can clearly see what appears to be a residency, also well kept. Um, that it feels like it's attached to that. Um, that very likely would correspond to his um. His home, place of residence. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I guess sort of a weird question. 
if I was to like look in a window and cast my invisible mage hand, um, I know the duration is only one minute. Mm -hmm. Would that like give me like a uh, investigation with disadvantage because it's so short or do I get this? An investigation that, like, check that... takes a minute, but okay. the hand doesn't have your entire sensory apparatus associated with it. So True. You, True. what you can see from your vantage is what you would use to operate the hand. The hand itself oh, doesn't okay. extend that, except in one very specific case that I don't think has been revealed yet for Ciro. Oh, yes. It, 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 this wouldn't apply because it's, I don't think it needs needs to be understood in that way, but mm -hmm. yes. Um, mm. uh, <laughs> it's very useful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um uh, I would, I guess, in order to not, I, I, I think we don't mention, to, we don't talk to him yet because he sounds like he's busy anyways. I think if we can make ourselves hidden and I can look in through uh, a window and see if I just see anything obvious. I mean, this man may have this journal uh, laid out in a glass case, you mm -hmm. know, uh, his pride and joy. Who knows? Perhaps. Um, well, let me give you the old blessing of the trickster, and I will give myself some guidance on deception. So I'll, I'll go. Or, sorry, on uh, uh, stealth, rather. Sure. Right. Sure, right. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think I think we'll try to find an a, like a way to see in. Sure. Because I don't want to break into this yeah. person's place easily, unless easily I done. need to. Easily done. You're able to go around the whole back of sort of this like it's like a like a boardwalk front to all these buildings. They're sort of right right next to each other. By going around the back of the buildings, you're pretty easily able to find a window that peers into um one window peers into sort of like a, a humble kind of living area. Uh, another window um peers into uh, sleeping quarters that is um really really small and cramped and you know just right off the gate you don't really nothing stands out to you about that it feels like there's more of this person's life in the sort of living area um i'll yeah. allow you to make a um perception check to see if anything okay. stands out to you um, in the living area yeah yeah um that is i believe 15 uh, with a 15, you definitely see a bookshelf. Um, you definitely see... Um, it's like when I say a bookshelf, I mean a shelf that has various things on it. There are a handful of books um, of different uh, description. Um, uh, just quickly make just an uh, insight check for me. And let's see if you can clear a, a good number um uh 13 yeah nothing in particular stands out to you as being like the book the journal uh bespoke journal um so you sort of sat uh not richer in information uh from having done that. i think immediately knowing i have some time on the on this blessing that i've been so kindly given um, but not wanting to waste too much time, uh, I would like to stealthily find the entrance if I need to pick the lock, do that, enter the residence, and go straight for that bookshelf. I think with, with a vibe of burglary in mind, uh, Ciro, having cased out the home of the unsuspecting blacksmith who may or may not be possessed of uh, relevant information which remain to your uh, future travels uh, Ciro makes to uh, makes to perform as she is best capable of doing so um, I think with that we should end our session for the evening uh, okay. and uh, I'm super interested to see how this pans out. Uh, respect for going going hard uh, right uh, away in this town. Really love it. Uh, you know, we 
we played nice for for a while. Um, oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. It's honestly just fun to watch you guys interacting. Uh, this or... lady, or these ladies, said that they had a ton of money in their room. Like, I don't even know if that means that they actually. I have didn't even like price. think of that. <laughs> I was like, if the if the if the inn had been more populated, my mind would have gone straight there. But because we were the only other people. Like, I didn't even think, like, oh, where's the bathroom? And, like, try to sneak up the stairs or anything. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, tr- I, I, didn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't yeah. expecting there to be another, you know, qu- like, someone we had to come back to, to, like, deal with. Um, yeah. So I, I was totally fine with just burning all the bridges. But, uh, you know. I think this one is a worthwhile, you gave me Blessing of the Trickster. I think he's hard at work you're capable of making a distraction if I like do something bad, which hopefully with advantage and a plus six to stealth, hopefully that won't happen. And you know, well, my know. biggest fear was this is that he has a family. Never. that's hanging out. <laughs> Oh my God. I just like, um, as Shayla was like, this is a single guy. This is just yeah. a single guy. <laughs> I, didn't I never think about think anyone in these all. things having families, but they're they're very likely to. I didn't, too. Either. I didn't um, even think of that at all. They're born and <laughs> live yeah. somewhere, so yeah. you know, yep. sometimes yep. that's, that's the... the best part of this. Well. Is of course that like you know this is his grandfather's notebook, blah, 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 but like I guarantee this guy would probably be willing to part for it for under ten gold. Like this is not a problem that we need to resort to making mm-hmm. an entire town hostile to, but it is kind of what. We do. <laughs> so. Sure, sir. Absolutely. I, yeah, I look forward to seeing impossible. how you guys. Yeah. What the after, after what? that last conversation? I just don't want to have another one. Like we need to do something. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and it would be impossible to like then steal it if we or it feels way less likely to be able to steal it if we were like, "What's up with that? With information specifically?" Yeah, no, I don't want to talk. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, that's a f- <laughs> very fair point. Fair point. But uh, yeah, there you guys go. Uh, yeah, still not on the lips yet that you're curious about this journal. It certainly helps your chances, but I'm definitely interested to see what you guys what the move is. This was next, our uh, first. Session. I was saying this to Nicholas when we took our break. This was our first shopping experience <laughs> yes and it's it's a whole session the shopping the shopping i know it never is it, it just is it yeah, just is it just, it just is yeah yeah i didn't think it was gonna be i have i have out way further than where we're at yeah. <laughs> yeah. so i'm like For okay sure. cool. just, we're doing this it this just thing. does take that i don't know it just it does. Just, well you have to like be you know if you're not going to come back to civilization i mean sh- there's just a lot to think about and yeah there's a lot of yeah. fact finding going on today too. It's not There's just purely like right. it was yeah. it was super fun oh, for me for to sure. ride. So yeah, I hope, hope it yeah. was fun for you guys to yeah. play. So yeah, no, yeah. I really enjoyed the the brunch convo. That was like yes, um, I love some old gals just like doing their weird wacky thing. But they yeah. also just had so much information too, and like they did. Possibly, I like, so badly have wanted to spill world building at you guys, and have <laughs> yes. not found any place to do it in. So I've just been sitting here, like waiting to do it. Yeah, that definitely <laughs> made me go like, oh yeah, I don't even like understand if there's like <laughs> theocracy or aristocracy yeah. or like what you know if it's like really. I mean, obviously there's cities, so there's civilization, but like, mm-hmm. ha- is it? Has it peaked and then fallen, or is it on the rise? Like who? You right. Know, who knows? Got to get in these kinds of conversations to find out. I'm afraid. Or do a brunch. History checks. Got a brunch. Got a <laughs> got brunch. A got a schmooze. <laughs> you got to get in there and get that networking going. But anyway, it's been a pleasure, guys. Uh, we'll we'll yes. call it a night. Um, yeah, yeah. See you yeah. next time. Enjoy your trip. Yeah. Thank have you. so much fun. That sounds amazing. And thank we'll, you so uh, much. We'll catch you on the other side. Yes, beginning of we'll be back on the thirtieth. So whatever the oh nice Wednesday yeah yeah that, be, yeah good right Perfect. on right on all right. sounds good all right yeah <laughs> thanks guys have a good one, have a good, one. <laughs> good night.